Welcome everybody, welcome to Kendo Tips. My name is Jose, I am a Godan in Kendo, and today we're going to be talking about Nito. So, as you may have guessed for the title of the stream, I have a guest today that he does Nito. I've known him for years and he's been doing Nito since back then. I'm very happy that he is taking the time to share his knowledge because I know it's not common to find a Nito player let alone one that will come out and share a lot of his knowledge with us. So I'm very grateful, guys. Um, how's everybody doing today? Christina, welcome to the stream. Avi, how are you doing? Hope everybody's doing great. How has your practices been? Hope everything's doing good. Uh, let me catch you up with a couple of things. Today after the stream, this uh, I'm gonna put I'm gonna post a new video and I'm gonna do a premiere. So that means that I can do a live chat. So if you guys stayed after the stream, we can watch the video together. You can ask your questions as we watch the video. I think it's a very interesting feature that YouTube has, and I wanted to try it out. So you're welcome to do that with me. Uh, let me just finish finish setting up all the stuff here. Sure, there's no extra noises here. So this is how it's going to be the format. I have a couple of questions to ask him and what I'm going to do is also I'm going to play some videos that he sent me about some of the basics and discussing a little bit about how to approach the opponent, how to fight with Nito and against Nito and some of the differences from, uh, you know, using one hand versus using two hands. Uh, give me one second, guys. Uh, um, you've been waiting for this stream for weeks. Uh, yes, I think you knew already that it was going to happen uh, before a lot of people. So yes, it's awesome. Okay, let me, I just want to make sure that I have my questions here on the screen before I start everything. And I'm gonna give him a call in a minute so that way we are we're all together here. Okay. Um, if you have any questions for him, let me know if I'm going to try to break down the, the stream in different sections. One is a little bit about his background on Nito and so on. Then understanding the technique, uh, the techniques, understanding, uh, taking up the stance and so on. And then more details, but I'll try to keep it segmented. So if you have a question that I have already on my questions, I'll let you know that I will ask it, but don't, don't be afraid of asking questions. By the way, uh, if you would like to be a member of the, the stream of the channel, I just put up the link on the, on the chat. 
you're welcome to become a member. And this stream, after it's over, I'm going to make it for members only, just so you know. Uh, I will be editing the videos. I'm going to make it public for everybody. But I'm going to try. I'm trying out to organize my channel in a different way. So just so you know, for this stream, this was, that's what's going to happen. Okay. Uh, I think we have a few people in here. If you haven't already, please take a second to hit the like button. That way this stream gets pushed out to more people. We want more people to know about all this stuff. And let me make sure that I start the call with Ash. Let me ask him if he's here. Okay, he's ready. Let me give him a call. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Perfect, okay, give me one second to set up everything here, set up the screens. Okay, I'm gonna put you, I'm gonna put you over here. Okay, guys. Can you guys hear him good? Can you say something, Ash? Yes, thing. Okay. This? If the chat can confirm that he has, I think I think you got good sound. Uh, if you guys can let me know how the volume is between him and myself, that would be great. Let me see. Say something. Uh, testing. Okay, let me just move because I couldn't, I can see you, the things over here. Okay, one more time, say something else. Okay, how's this? Okay, uh, Pokemon, you said maybe we can hear, okay, you can hear, maybe turn him up a little bit. Perfect, thank you. Okay, yeah, I think we should be fine. And so, Ash, welcome to the stream. Thank you very much for doing this today with us. Um, Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's really a pleasure. My chair keeps sinking, so if I have to fix it every, <laughs> nice and, every once in a while, excuse me. But, uh, Avi, so is the volume for him good now? Are you good? Everything fine? So, as I mentioned before to you, I have a set of questions here. I'll, I will ask you, I'm, I try to keep him segmented to different areas you know a little bit of your background a little bit of what nito is and how to do it and then maybe we can talk we can discuss about how to approach nito together you know once against you know two two hands one hand and so on um but there's going to be sometimes wild cards some people will ask a really good question that i didn't think about and i may want to ask it on the spot okay and just so everybody knows, then we're going to switch. What I want to do is I want to switch to the to the video screen just to make sure that, yeah, you show up. Give me one second. Um, let me see. Okay, one second, guys. Oh. Hmm. Okay, perfect. Okay, so right here should be fine. Everything, everybody should be able to see you just fine. Maybe can you move a little bit to your left, I believe. Yeah, that, that'll be perfect. Okay, but for now, we're gonna be here. Okay, so tell us a little bit about your background in Kendo. How did you start? What, what made you start Kendo? And then so on, what made you start Nito? Okay, well, they're actually the same story. Uh, when mm. I was a kid, uh, about eight years old, my mother was in college, and she was taking uh, film courses. Mm. So she would bring home movies that they were discussing and dissecting in class. So because of that, we watched them together, and I fell in love with uh, Akira Kurosawa. Uh, okay. I loved Yojimbo and Seven Samurai. And um, from there, uh, I watched um, the Samurai Trilogy, the movie about uh, Musashi, hmm. uh, based on the novel Musashi by uh, Yoshikawa Eiji. And uh, bearing in mind, this was when I was uh, about eight years old. So uh, just looking up this stuff, I came across Kendo. 
and I really wanted to try it. And then after reading about Musashi, uh, I really wanted, I specifically wanted to do uh, two sword kendo, right? So uh, it was a number of years until I was able to join a dojo well over a decade. So by that point, I was still dead set on doing Nito. So uh, I finally joined a dojo and did Chudan for a while hmm. and then started asking if I could practice a little bit of Nito. And luckily, one of the sensei was also doing some Nito. So um, she got to, uh, I got to play around with it a bit. And uh, at some point, while I was still Mudancha, I switched over to Nito full time. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that, but uh, <laughs> you know, that's what I did. Um, then from there, um, about four months after switching to Nito full time, uh, I went to my first uh, Taikai uh, where I did Nito. This would be um, William and Mary at the William, uh, the College of William and Mary in yes. Williamsburg, Virginia, uh, in maybe 2006. Yeah, 2006. Um, there was also a Shinsa the next day. Um, it was I did that uh, with Chudan. But I actually didn't bring a 3-9 with me, so I had to borrow a sword from someone to stand up and do the, the Shinsa. Um, and uh, a few more of my Shinsa went that way until mm. Nidan, when I did my Shinsa in Nito. Um, and then since Nidan, Nidan, Sandan, and Yondan, I've done all of them in Nito. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Nice. So, um, aside from that, uh, so I started with the Annapolis Kendo Dojo, uh, then we formed the Baltimore Annapolis Dojo, and then some years later, I moved to Virginia, and now I'm a member of the uh, Nova Dojo, uh, Northern Virginia Kendo Kai, which is a member of the Capital Area Budokai, okay. where they study other arts such as Batodo, Iaido, uh, Atarashi Naginata, Kudo. So there's a lot of groups, a lot of groups there. Nice, nice. So lucky, so hard to find all these things and you have it in one place over there. Yes, yes. <laughs> you practice any other besides Kendo? I, I personally don't. Some of the members of uh, my dojo practice multiple arts though. Nice, 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 nice. But yeah. because we have an Atarashi Naginata dojo, uh, in years past, we've been able to do Ishu GI, which mm, is yes. uh, a, a match against other weapons. So mm -hmm. I've got to got to fight against Naginata and Kusarigama, and uh, that's that's a lot of fun. If <laughs> you get a chance to do Ishu GI, absolutely take it. I need to I need to go to you to do that because there's no other place I can think of close to me that I can I can do that. That's awesome. Yeah, Naginata is a little bit hard to find, so we, we're very lucky. Yeah, it's. I, I, I'm wondering, I think there's a lot of opportunities for Nitoka to do against Naginata, right? Uh, no, well, both are both are somewhat rare. Yeah, no, no, I'm saying uh, a lot of opportunities that you can make to, to strike, to come in, to close the distance and so on. Oh, oh yes. Um, when doing Ishiji, you'll find that... Um, they can strike from much farther out mm -hmm, than mm -hmm. we, we can with a, a three nine shinai. Yeah. So getting in close is imperative. Yes. And being able to defend yourself while attacking from Nito um, makes it much easier <laughs> I think, for the Nitoka <laughs> against Naginata. Much definitely, much definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So you mentioned a little bit of uh, oh, actually, I was saying Nito versus Kusarigama. So how how did that go? How does that go? Extraordinarily awkward. <laughs> <laughs> what did you um, learn from this from this exchange? Well, so obviously it was a, a practice uh, Kusarigama. So um, on one end is a kama made from wood and on the other end is instead of having an iron weight mm -hmm. it's a, a sort of uh, weighted puff ball so that it has weight to it but it won't give you a concussion yeah. or you know break your you know break bones but if they attack you with it just right it, it can wrap around your arms hands weapon it can hit you in the face like out of nowhere yeah um so i'm not sure this was years ago 
So honestly, I'm not sure I was in the right frame of mind to learn anything from it other yeah. than to have fun doing it. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. And then sometimes, you know, that's also some, one of the reasons for us to do Kendo, right? For enjoying as well. So oh, absolutely. Definitely. That's a good one. Okay. So you mentioned a little bit about you don't recommend for someone to start Nito at the time you did. But when do you think is the best time for somebody to at least get into Nito and how how should you, they do it? Should they do it full time, part time and so on? Give me a little bit of your thoughts on that. Well, in Japan, um, a lot of people start when they're children and uh, through elementary school and middle school, they'll do uh, they'll practice at school and do Taikai. And at high school, Jodan gets introduced. Mm -hmm. Nito doesn't get introduced, at least in Taikai, until college. So that's typically around Sandan Yondan level. Yeah. And at Sandan, you're expected to have some idea of Mai and timing and a little bit more advanced ideas of Kendo. So I think with switching to Nito and, and Jodan uh, similarly, you want to be able to do fundamental kendo because um, you have to learn things like posture and like i said my the proper distance you need to learn seme and connecting with your opponent through uh, ri you need to develop these things and i think if you're trying to do something that's a little bit different than what everyone else is doing um, that makes it difficult and now that being said uh, more important than any of that is that you have to have a sensei who's prepared and willing to teach you Nito. Mm, mm. So without a sensei, it's extremely hard to develop skills properly without making lots of mistakes. Yeah. Um, when I started, I, uh, I was watching a lot of videos and, um, and reading books. Um, and uh, my sensei was helping uh, develop some ideas about uh, adapting uh, Jodan Waza into Nito. And it wasn't until slightly later that I got to meet the uh, sensei from Musashikai, where I got a uh, specific Nito instruction that um, sort of put everything together. Um, so I think, in my opinion, Sandan Yondan is a good area to, to start Nito. But it's really up to it's really up to your your sensei and dojo to determine whether you're at a at a place where you you can take advantage of of that type of training. I see, I see. Um, yeah, and I, maybe okay, maybe I'm doing the things that the chat wants to do. Us asking the questions, getting excited for the questions. I have so many, so I'm writing them down. I'm just gonna. Uh, backtrack a little bit because avi avi he does nito as well he's in greece and oh, fantastic avi uh remind me you're going for sandan right he's asking uh do you recommend taking shinsa into nito or should he wait oh no wait so you should wait for the question my bad so the question is should he take his shinsa in nito uh, i don't think i'm necessarily qualified to answer that <laughs> I think it's up to you and your sensei, as well as the Shinsain. Okay. Um, you don't want to um, uh, disrupt your partner's Shinsa. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, uh, I think it's really on a case by case basis. Um, in my case, when I tested for Nidon, uh, both of my partners got a third match to go with me so that they were able to do their two matches you know, uh, Chudon versus Chudon, and then they got an extra match with me so that I didn't um, uh, disrupt their, their yes, uh, test. Yes, 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 um, At Sandan and Yondan, that didn't happen. Um, but I think it's really up to the people in your area mm. uh, and whether you feel comfortable um, uh, having your Nito evaluated in that way. Are your... Uh, kendo fundamentals at Sandan level while you're doing Nito. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those are the those are the kinds of things you have to think about. Um, okay. Yeah, I haven't practiced with you, so I I, <laughs> uh, I I can't really say. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, Avi, so what he's saying is that of course he's not gonna give you a thought unless he sees your kendo first of all. 
Uh, and what, what I, I think what Avi was trying to, to say is like, you know, what you said, I think, answers the question because the part of disrupting your, your partner's uh, uh, match and also the, the panel being able to uh, properly uh, grade you, those are the elements that maybe he should be considering the most at this point. Right, uh, based on what I know from him, because I do know him, I practice with him uh, in Greece. Mm -hmm. uh, Pokemon is asking now that you mentioned books, what would you recommend? Which books would you recommend? You have any recommendations? Well, I actually, I actually brought it with me if I could just show it on camera here. Of course, of um, the Musashikai book. Uh huh. Uh, it's called Kendo Nitoriu no Waza Toridon. That means um, a two sword kendo technique and theory. Mm. So this book uh, was written by Sasaki Sensei from Musashikai, and it talks about the methods to uh, to doing Nito Waza as well as the history of Nito. It's only in Japanese, um, and I think it's out of print, but you might be able to find a copy of it. Mm. But if you can get a hold of it, it has so much information. Nice, nice. Um, it's uh, it's extremely helpful. Nice, nice. I, I I will try to get one myself just for the value of it. So it's a lot of value to understand Nito. Um, okay, give us a little bit of um, the history of Nito. Like how how did Nito came into Kendo? Everything you can you can share. Anything you can share about it, I think will be good. Uh, okay, so as I understand it, before World War II, Nito was a little bit um, a little bit more popular. Um, you'd see it, uh, in fact, there are videos on YouTube of, um, competitors, uh, dem demonstrating in front of the Emperor doing Nito. Um, after World War II, when Kendo was banned, um, uh, when Kendo was reintroduced, Nito, I, uh, as far as I understand, wasn't really a concern. Uh, Kendo was introduced through schools as a way to uh as part of the physical fitness programs for um especially high schools and it seems to me until the 70s and 80s uh nito was extremely rare um and then in i think 1991 uh toda sensei a very uh, famous sensei in japan he won the all japan championship uh using jodan i think twice uh, maybe even three times, I, th mm. I think twice, uh, he passed with Nito in 1991. Mm. Or, sorry, passed Hachidan in ni with Nito in 1991. And until Fuji-sensei passed uh, Hachidan with Nito um, around 2015, 2016, uh, Toda-sensei had been the only person to have done that. Mm. So uh, he became very famous, and a lot of people looked to him for uh, guidance on Nito. Uh, since then, uh, since then uh, Musashikai formed as a Nito school where sensei from around Japan could get together, uh, I think, once a month to train um, Nito together and to sort of uh, codify a standard set of uh, Nito uh, kihon waza mm -hmm. and technique. Um, and from there, uh, you know, some people just pick it up and decide they want to do it. And each person has different reasons. Um, it hasn't had the boost that, uh, as far as I know, no one's won the All Japan using Nito. But any year that someone had come in first place from Jodan, Jodan suddenly explodes. Yeah. So uh, it becomes famous. So Nito hasn't done that yet. Uh, I expect if that happens, uh, the popularity of Nito will skyrocket, at least for a little while. Yes. But since then, um, Musashikai has uh, spread Nito, especially in Japan and Europe. Mm -hmm. And in the United States, uh, we used to hold the, the Musashikai seminar where we'd host their, their sensei. Um, now, Stroud Sensei hosts the Nito camp which morphed from the Musashikai seminar to Nito at large. Okay. So they would host sensei from around Japan who weren't members of Musashikai, but were popular Nito sensei, mm -hmm. like um, Ugajin sensei, Wada sensei, Nagasaki sensei, Kisa sensei, and uh, Toda sensei 
for a few years before he passed away, he was able to come and teach us a lot. Nice. So um, Nito in the U.S. has gotten bigger largely because of Stroud Sensei's efforts in um, in fostering that relationship with the Nito Sensei in Japan. Yes. Uh, I, I never got the chance to go, but is, has that stopped after COVID completely? Has, it hasn't revived yet? There hasn't been one yet. There's a lot of issues with travel and everything. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard anything official, but I'm hoping um, I'm hoping there's going to be a seminar in 2023. I haven't heard anything on that yet. Yeah. But since uh, travel is starting to open up and everything, um, it's generally held in uh, early to mid June. So certainly keep an eye out for that. Uh, the fact is there's nowhere else to get that level of Nito instruction. Yes, yes. Uh, you have Fuji Sensei, who's Hachidan and past Hachidan with Nito uh, leading, as well as Sato Sensei, Ugajin Sensei, Wada Sensei, many Sensei coming to, uh, to teach Nito. And uh, it's a, a fantastic, uh, fantastic kendo camp. Yes, uh, I, I heard about it. I never had the chance to go and I would love to be there because it is a great experience. I know everybody, I know a lot of the people that have gone and I hear nothing but good stuff about it. Um, so I was going to ask you, you mentioned Musashi Kai. How many schools are there of Nito and what are some of the key, What? why the separation? Tell us, tell us a little bit about that. So aside from Musashikai, I don't know of any uh, uh, Nito-specific schools, but there are um, individual practitioners from all over Japan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and uh, Nito is more rare, so it's slightly less codified as the method to do it. Okay. The method that I'm taught is uh, the Musashikai method that I've learned from Fuji-sensei and Sato-sensei mostly as well as Sasaki Sensei and others. Um, uh, and that method uses uh, the Chushin or the balance point of the Shinai. And so I can demonstrate that a little bit later. Um, but when I see um, uh, other people picking up Nito, the typical method that, that I've noticed is someone will practice Jodan mm -hmm. and then adapt Jodan Waza into katate waza okay. uh, and then adapt that into um, nito using standard chudan uh, waza with the shoto and jodan waza with uh, the daito okay and so um that's a slightly different method than than i use uh than that i was taught and um i can show you some of the difference of of that when we get to uh you know maybe a later portion of the yes, interview of course of course uh, actually, it's very interesting you say that because even in the, you know, I always refer to the Kendo instructional manual, uh, the, the Kendo guide for instructors uh, from the old Japan Kendo Federation. The, the yeah. section in Nito, I think it's two lines. That's it, right? It's yeah. very short. And pretty much yeah, what I've it says, it. pretty much what it says is what you just said. Oh, everything in Nito is, is an adaptation of uh, Jodan Waza, so refer to that. <laughs> it actually says refer to the refer to the glossary on Yuko Datotsu to understand the valid points for it, and and that's it. It's very very minimalistic. So yeah, yeah it's it it's great that Musashi Kai then is is doing exactly that about the codification and, and uh, the uh, what's it called um, like pretty much creating a curriculum, right? That's that's what Musashi Kai did for exactly for Nito. Nice. Um, so you kind of you kind of talked a little bit about this uh, when it comes to the future for Nito if somebody wins the All Japan. But in general, what predictions do you have, or what what can you see happening with Nito in the upcoming years when it comes to maybe popularity and understanding as well? So I think it's it's become more popular over the years. Um, it hasn't exploded but uh, it's not so rare to see it anymore. Um, when I started doing Nito, um, I was uh, the only one doing it at the tournaments uh, where, I, where I, I went. I remember. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, 
but I think more than becoming popular, it's becoming more uh, more understood. So uh, people are becoming more comfortable um, recognizing what is and isn't ipon from Nito. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people, I think the stigma against against it is is uh, going away. Okay, nice. Um, and uh, yeah, if if someone does take the all Japan with it, then I think it's going to explode. But aside from that, I think uh, just the people doing Nito now are uh, just going to get better, and yeah. um, and uh, more students are going to come to it. Yeah. Um, but um, a lot of people try it out and then decide it's not for them uh, for whatever reason. Maybe they don't like Katate Waza or they don't want to sort of start from scratch and lose all the training they've done from Chudan yes. and or Jodan. So they want to stick with what they've been spending years and years mm -hmm. training. So, um, so since it's something that you typically would switch to later in your kendo career, you have to kind of think of it as almost throwing away so much of your previous effort. And mm. it has to be someone who's willing to do that to um, to do Nito. Yeah. So I think that's kind of a, a kind of a different mindset. In my case, I started out, I was dead set on doing it. So I knew yeah. I was going to go for it from the very beginning. Yes. Um, but I, I don't think many other people feel that way. Yes. Uh, no, I understand that. And yeah, I can tell by, by even your story of how you got into Kendo itself. It was always about Nito. And for you, I guess it was like taking the community, the first courses of the school before you can take your, your specialization. Right. So <laughs> that's cool. Um, Avi is asking, do you believe that there are transferable skills? I, I think skills. Yeah. But Waza also from Ito to Nito and vice versa. Oh, absolutely. So, um, at the Nito camps, uh, the, um, the motto is Ichi ni Ichi jo, which means one and two were the same. Mm. So you have to approach Nito Kendo the same way you approach Ito Kendo. You have the same, um, the same seme, the same posture, same footwork, uh, same, uh, same attitude. So yeah. a lot of what, uh, what you develop in advanced kendo, uh, past waza is seme and kizeme, mm. is um, your non-physical seme, your ability to project yourself. Yes. So uh, with nito, you have to uh, you have to understand your mai, where your shoto isn't necessarily going to be able to reach your partner's shinai. Mm -hmm. So for that to work, you have to uh, develop kizame and the idea of projecting even a short sword farther. So that's the same with Ito. From Chudan, you have to move in such a way that you're taking the space in the center. You want to disrupt your opponent so that they'll open up something for you. Yeah. Uh, and with Nito, it's the same. So you develop a sort of... Um, instinct for how far away you can strike and taking the space even if you can't physically move the shinai out of the way and i think that's extremely beneficial for um uh for chudan as well yeah and and of course jodan mm. uh aside from that <clears throat> um your uh timing is also roughly the same mm. You, uh, you have to be able to see and feel uh, suki or openings so that you can attack them properly. And those are all the same between yeah, Shudan yeah. and Nito. Um, and if, if you're doing uh, Hidari Nito, which is Nito where the Daito is in the left hand, mm -hmm. it used to be called uh, Gyaku Nito, mm -hmm. to be Sei Nito in the right hand and Gyaku Nito in the left. Now mm -hmm. they're moving towards Migi Nito in the right mm -hmm. hand, Hidari Nito in the left then um, so much of what you do is focused on utilizing your uh, left arm, hand, and wrist properly. Yeah. And that transfers directly into uh, a firm strike with Chudan. Yes. yes so correct. you still have to strike and think the exact same way. Correct. Correct. So I think a lot yeah. of the skills will make yeah. your Chudan stronger as well. Uh, it's, it's interesting because, you know, as, as we mentioned this, and this is part of some of the questions that I will have for you later, 
talking about that communication part and all this higher level elements of Kendo, uh, for me, it, it's all the same. And especially when I talk to Jordan players or, you know, in, anybody, once, you know, the maybe the, the way of doing it physically can vary, especially depending body types and so on. But the higher level elements, they, they, they remain constant. And yeah, it's, it's, it's enjoyable to, to hear that from you that, you know, ha same thing happens with Nito uh, and, and Ito as well. Okay. Um, the next question I want to ask you is, besides obviously the reason you started Nito, what are some of the reasons why somebody should, or, you know, that what are some of the reasons why somebody should start Nito? I think um, maybe actually some of the same reasons to start Kendo in general. Uh, maybe there is a sensei who does Nito that you really enjoy their Kendo and you want to emulate them. Mm. Um, maybe you just want to explore another aspect of Kendo. Um, there's a lot of reasons uh, really uh, to start Nito. Uh, maybe... Um, Maybe your dojo just wants experience against Nito, so when they yeah. fight it in the Taikai, they're not, um, they're prepared. Surprised, yeah. They're prepared to fight it, yeah. Um, so things like that, I feel everybody, everybody you ask who does it uh, will give you a different reason. Of course, of course, yeah. Um, so in my opinion, uh, I, I think bad reasons to start are because you're looking for some sort of advantage in a tournament. Mm hmm. If you're looking uh, for a Taikai advantage rather than to explore uh, another facet of Kendo, I think that with that mindset, you won't be delving deeper into the meaning of Kendo and practicing Nito as, as uh, Kendo itself. You'll be looking for tricks and things like that or just to be different from everyone else. Uh, I think isn't a isn't a, a very good reason to do it. Um, if you're trying to stand out, that sort of that might, uh, among other things, that might throw off the wa of uh, the dojo and uh, your practices with other people. The the wa being sort of the um, uh, serenity of the of the practice. I think it's important to approach Nito as kendo, hmm. so that everyone you practice with feels comfortable with you and is able to um, is able to practice specific waza against Nito as well as practice their basic Kihon Kendo, which is what we all want to do. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, good philosophy. And it, that's one of the things I love about Kendo, right? That you, we want to we want to do it for to better ourselves rather than, you know, just get one point and that's Certainly. it. Right. Uh, so Conrad Slater said that Kotenuki men work very well for him. Uh, I'm guessing uh, when we talked about the, you know, the transferable skills from one side to the other, from Ito to Nito. Uh, Trentafilo, so Akis, the world needs more Nito players for the rest of, for the rest to adapt and for already existing to improve. Uh, that's one of the things I that... that's true. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Sometimes when people, and this is... Maybe you can you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I see when people are trying to because I know some people that don Nito in a tournament just to get that advantage, just to go for that advantage. And one thing that I notice is that you know they they don't get very far in the sense that they're going for the advantage of people not knowing how to fight against Nito. But once they find that one person that knows how to fight against Nito, they're done. They're pretty oh, easy. Oh yeah. So that actually. And I think once you once you get to higher ranks. Even if um, if you're competing against like Godons and Rokodons, yeah. even if they don't have experience against Nito, they understand Kendo, they understand timing, Mai, um, and they'll have uh, uh, developed their spirit to where they can attack you anyway. Yeah. Um, the the idea of getting advantage because people don't understand that will only take you so far. Yes. Yes. Totally. It, it, it won't work in the long term. Totally. So Nekomata asked, uh, said harmony. I'm thinking that Nekomata asked when you were talking about the wa. And yes, uh, harmony is a better word than serenity. Uh, harmony <laughs> is what I was looking for, and I just couldn't think of it. True, uh, true. Wa is harmony, not serenity. Uh, normally, and uh, Nekomata, thank you very much for, for bringing that up. Um, 
one of the things that I like to try to do, and I know it's hard because we're so used to saying the words, you know, like kamae, uh, you know, zanshin. We, we used to saying the words in Japanese. Sometimes I try to find the word in Spanish, even though it's something like so obvious as like kamae. So just to try to keep things on the people that are joining in that they're not really knowledgeable. Oh, on they'll the, try on to the also bring up the English words along, <laughs> alongside. Uh, <laughs> don't don't worry, I'm, I'm sure somebody will help us out too as well. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we talked about a little bit about you know people starting for you know the right reasons, the wrong reason, but and we talked about somebody want to have a competitive edge, and you know like everything else, there has to be advantages and there have to be disadvantages. So what are some of advantages and disadvantages of doing Nito? Well, I think the first advantage is that a lot of people will be confused as to what to do against you. <laughs> yes. That only lasts for a short period of time, mm -hmm. but you will run into it a lot. Um, as well as um, uh, being able to defend at the same time as you attack. Mm. So you have to remember that the Kodachi, the short sword, is not a shield, but you can use it to, uh, to block as well as, a, as attack with the Daito. And you can use it um, for waza such as um, Suryotosh and, and force uh, force it down Osai waza, mm -hmm. holding the Shinai down. You can only do that so long. You, you can't hold it down indefinitely. You get yeah. Hansoku. Um, um, Harai waza, sweeping the sword out of the way. It's Suryage waza. You can, um, you can really um, interfere with your opponent's kendo. Mm. Um... Also, uh, changing the diff it's a slightly, slightly different Mai than players might be used to. Uh, as far as disadvantages go, uh, while your opponent has only one sword and you have two, you have to remember that your opponent has two hands on their sword. Mm. So, uh, for a Nito player, you have to be wary of Suryage Waza. You know, it's it's a bit easier to force your Daito out of center mm. if you if you're not in control. Um, so uh, you have to develop the ability to uh, control the center with only one of your swords at a time, if needs be. Um, on top of that, uh, there are Shimpan that won't be comfortable. Um, uh, evaluating your points so you might potentially not get a point hmm. I don't think that's really anything for you to worry about but that does come up um, and uh, yeah I, I think it's 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 mainly that uh, you're fighting one-handed against against two yeah I see I see yeah very very good very interesting because I think sometimes when people, and I'm talking about the Ito players that go fight against Nito, they feel discouraged, especially when they mm -hmm. start attacking and they cannot find an opening, right? And yeah. because they go, they, they just attack blindly. But I found out later on as I learned to practice against Nito that it's not about just attacking, it's about making the person make the mistake and you'll be able to retake that exactly. center. So. Yeah, if you make a mistake with one hand, it's much harder to uh, recover from it because mm, mm, mm. you only have one hand on the sword. If it's thrown way out of the way, it's a little slower to recover. Uh, the other thing, um, the other um, disadvantage you might have is where uh, you can use the Shoto to control center and to defend yourself. At the same time, the Kote there... Uh, behind the Shoto is uh, Yuko da Tatsubui. That's a valid target. Mm. So both of your Kote are always valid. So while you're using your Shoto to uh, block or or uh, attack the Shinai, you're pressing one of your targets into harm's way. Yes. So you have to be wary of both Kote at all times. That's also uh, a target for your opponent. I see, I see. Yeah, sounds very good to keep in mind. Um, Avi was mentioning that even when you take Nito, you know, it can also be a disadvantage if you have an opponent that's too jumpy. You know, you can like you know can can catch you by surprise. I'm guessing that's what he meant to say uh, as a Nitoka. But I guess that depends also how where you are of the fight, right? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so you talked about the different schools uh, on Nito and so on. What are, and you talked about, you know, the um, Migi Nito and Hidari Nito. So what are all the, the different stances and styles that we can do Nito in? So I'm not talking only about the hands, but also talking about the feet and, you know, Yodan, Gedan, Chudan. If you can tell us a little bit about maybe some of the instances where we would use different stances and so on. Well, so you can do Nito um, with either hand and either foot forward. I found that um, more people use the Daito in the right hand than the left. Um, but that's just from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, and as far as which foot you have forward, a lot of people who move, who adapt from Chudan to Nito will keep their right foot forward, and people who adapt Jodan to Nito will have the left foot forward. Mm -hmm. um, either one is fine, but you need to still work on you know proper kendo footwork. Mm. Um, aside from deciding which hand to use, the typical kamai you see with Nito, where the daito is held in, at Jodan level and the kobachi is at Chudan, is called jogetachi. You know, up and down swords. Uh, there's also times where you'll hold both uh, Daito and Chudan, both sort of pointing towards the Tsukidare, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the throat. Gar. And, uh, yeah. And, um, or crossing the swords in uh, Juji Chudan, as well as both swords in Jodan, or crossed in Jodan at the uh, Juji Jodan. That's called Juji because it crosses similar to the uh, the number 10 in Japanese. Okay, yes. Um, and against Jodan players, uh, you sometimes see uh, Nitoka uh, adopt uh, Jodan um, especially uh, so they can attack with one sword and keep their other sword up. Mm. Um there's there's many different strategies uh, strategies to it, but the, the one you typically see is joge tachi. You know the typical yes uh, daito one up. up one down. Yeah. Um, aside from that, there's also versions of uh, waki gamai and kasumi gamai, mm -hmm. and others that are uh, very rarely used. Um, for waki gamai, I only actually ever see it used with one particular waza. Um, which I can get, I can get to later. But okay. Wakigamai for Nito does exist as well as uh, Kasumi and Hasso. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I mean, like the the, the stances are the same. So, um, okay, so you have the the both swords in Chudan. We I see this. It's not very often I see this, but what will be some of the reasons why this would happen? Well, from that position, uh, you can raise both swords together, uh, crossed, mm -hmm. and catch the shinai. As your opponent's striking down, you can catch upward in sort of an uke, or a uh, blocking motion, catch with both, and move the daito strike. to strike, say, do, or do suriage with both and strike men with the daito. This I allows see. you to attack your opponent's shinai from underneath. Ah, uh, I see, uh, I see. You can change the, the cadence of the match. I see, I see. Yeah, it's not very common. Thank you for saying that because now, now I can put it in my head and I can prepare it in case I see it. <laughs> you can also uh, ski from that position. Yes. Which um, people don't tend to expect. Mm. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. People, especially because I guess they feel confident having a longer sore. And that's one of the things that I, I, I noticed that good Nitoka have this skill to, you know, as you said, project the sore. And what that does, it kind of allows the person to to be able to close the distance and be more surprise, like you know, surprising at the moment of the of the technique. So when I fight against somebody that knows what they're doing, this is I notice this. They close the distance, and you don't realize when they close the distance. So it's very very interesting to to, to watch. Um, Abby is asking, do you believe there's an advantage to switching footwork uh, or learning both footwork to an equal level? I think it's extremely important to learn um, uh, with either foot forward. I'm much more comfortable with my right foot forward. Um, so lately I've been practicing more with my left foot forward. You can use, uh, you can swap feet to move um, like a half step at a time. Mm -hmm. 
and adjust your Kamai incrementally, uh, as well as attacking from any position. For instance, if you do um, Hiraki Ashi, that's uh, the opening foot where you move side laterally uh, around mm -hmm. your opponent. Um, a lot of the time moving left, you'll end up with your left foot forward. Mm. And uh, it's very beneficial to be able to attack from that position without then, uh, without having to readjust your feet before your attack. Um, I, th I think it's extremely important to do both. Yes. Um, one thing, if I can, if I can add up to that, is like normally I notice that many people have such, you know, many people drag the left leg on on the regular stance. They drag the left leg, and this is Zuriyashi. a skill that was that. Uh, Zuriyashi to to drag the foot. Yeah, yeah. So they, they, you know, it kind of becomes lazy, and it's one of the things that people need to learn that skill. But if you're gonna do, especially switching the the footwork, you need to learn the skill with both legs, because it doesn't come natural. To many people, so it's something that we need to really work on. Um, Discipline equals freedom says uh, that when he goes against Nito player, he's always ready to do Kayashi, uh, mixing it with good Hirakiashi, uh, and constantly pressuring the Nito and Daito to throw off the, you know, the timing. Uh, so maybe maybe we can uh, save these things about talking about when fighting against Nito. We can move on to that. We can put that in that section later on. Okay. So discipline. I'm not ignoring you. I'm just saying we're, we're gonna move it move it down a little bit. Um, okay. So uh, it's finding uh, finding mentors uh, mentors and being able to start Nito. How can we start Nito? What is the right way to to go at it? Especially when there is no Nito around you, right? So for example, me, I hear. If I wanted to, to do Nito, uh, there's, there's, I, I think the closest Nitoka is you. And you're like, what, like 13 hours away from me? <laughs> yeah, we're, pre we're pretty far now. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I think also, um, if you really want to, to try Nito, uh, as long as your sensei is comfortable letting you do it and um, is interested in exploring that with you, I think you can learn a lot from videos. Um, it's not the same as the real thing, but if you're practicing that way with people practicing kendo, um, then it's not solo practice. You're still doing with people who are doing kendo and try to um, maybe trying to copy what everyone around you is doing with one hand, uh, I think is one way to do it. But honestly, I think the number one way to do it if you're in the united states get to the um the nito camp at the next opportunity it uh i can't i can't say enough how important it is having hachidan and many nanadan sensei who are very experienced with nito to uh to give you very specific instruction and at a very granular level mm. not just an overview of nito but they can help. Uh, they can help adjust minute details to get it as uh, as perfect as you can possibly do. So if you imagine how long it took you to develop your menuchi waza from shudan, you know yeah. there's many ways to move the shinai and many intricate small pieces to that waza. Um, it's the same with nito. Uh, like I said earlier from the seminar, Ichi ni Ichijo, one and two were the same. Hmm. It's the same sort of training. You have to be ready to make all the adjustments and be very critical of yourself where you look for your mistakes and weaknesses and adjust to start to eliminate those. Um, you need to be able to have someone to tell you exactly where you're going wrong and what looks weird so that you can adjust it to make it look exactly like standard kendo. Mm. Nice. And you already mentioned the the videos, the books. Do um, you have any other resources that we should be aware of if we're looking to educate ourselves into Nito? Um, you could always um, you could always email some sensei that you know of. Yes. Uh, 
I, I'm not, uh, other than videos and books and access to Sensei, I, I'm not sure of any other way to do it, honestly. Okay. Nice. Um, just for the people that watch us outside of the U.S., um, what recommendations would you have for them to maybe get in contact with a sensei or maybe a place they can, you know, communicate to? Any, any, any advice? Uh, outside of the U.S., I don't know too much. Mm -hmm. There is a yearly Musashikai seminar in Europe. Okay. Um, so I would look for that if you're in Europe. Um, in South America or Africa, I'm I'm just honestly not sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. In um, South America, I I don't know if there's any Nitoka in South America that I can think of. I know last Latin American Championship I went to, they had Jordan players, but no Nito, if I can remember. Yeah, no Nito. So, mm. oh. and so sorry, yeah. I'm not I'm not much help. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Yes. Um, okay, so let's start, let's start working into, you know, doing Nito itself so for the people that are getting started and so on. What are some important pointers that they should keep in mind, uh, when pra during their practice? I think it's important to keep in mind that Nito is Kendo. So all the fundamentals are the same. You want to still keep proper posture. You don't want to, for instance, you don't want to lean too much. You don't want to um, use your shoulders too much. You want to adapt your waza the same way you would from chudan. Um, when working with a partner for kihon waza, you want to try to make it as similar to receiving for them mm. as normal. So they are opening men. You want to be able to do your uh, clean menuchi just like you would from chudan. Uh, same with Kote, Do, and Ski. Um, <clears throat> the Waza themselves might have a different method, but they're still, you know, exactly the same Waza. Mm -hmm. So you want to sort of fit in while still doing something that's slightly different. I see. Yes. So you you want to be able to pretty much what you said. Do not kind of like what you were talking about the test. You don't want to disrupt their test. You also don't want to disrupt their progress, their practice as well. So normally not interrupting them, you'll do uh, better Kihon basic Kendo. Mm -mm. Kendo. Um, normally for me, when I, when I get a chance to practice with Anitoka, I ask them to receive as Anitoka for me, just for my practice. But in general, I understand what you're saying. And I, I think it's a great, great pointer to make sure that you are within the group who you are uh, promoting everybody else to come up as well uh, properly. Um, okay, so let me catch up with a little bit of comments. Um, Jan men is asking, uh, what is your place of choice for practice in Japan? I haven't honestly been to Japan yet. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to go in 2020, but uh, you we know, know what happened. Conspired to <laughs> ruin everything. Um, uh, so my sensei... Uh, 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 my two direct uh, Nito Sensei, uh, Fuji Sensei, and Sato Sensei are in. Uh, Fuji sen Sensei is in Yamaguchi Ken. In fact, he uh, competed in the All Japan Interprefectural uh, team uh, for the Yamaguchi uh, team. Mm. Uh, and his wife, Ako Sensei, who's a Nanadan and who also passed Nanadan with Nito was a um she competed as the taisho for the yamaguchi ken team yes in fact for the uh last week there was the all japan women's championship she was asked to be one of the official shimpan for the all japan nice so i would love to practice uh at his dojo in yamaguchi ken as well as sato sensei's dojo uh in chiba mm. i haven't had the opportunity to practice in japan yet but I'm hoping that, you know, things, uh, things open up and I can finally make it to yes. Japan to practice yes. with Sensei. Yes. Let's meet over there. That's what we need to do. Um, oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, can you show the book real quick? Uh, Jan oh, yeah. just joined up and the, the Nito book. So, Jan, I, if you're still here, uh, this is the book that he is recommending. 
cool yeah, yeah you're good <laughs> uh and he he this is the book that he recommended that uh one of his best resources uh for everybody that's here please if you haven't hit the like button make sure that this stream gets pushed out to more people out there really appreciate it uh okay so let me ask a question because there's always the you know the gear the equipment there's always the the, the the thought how should it be what should it be so anything different i everybody talks about you know the shorter uh men that it for the for the men i guess that's the only pretty much the only difference for the bogu right uh i just use standard men that i okay it, um i feel like shorter men that was a fad like 10 years ago yeah <laughs> this is the thing that normally i think maybe a lot of people try to talk about it like oh it's shorter men that it's shorter men that it but i think more importantly than that is the shinai right mm -hmm. because uh oh, yeah. 37 normally when you buy a 37 from a from a place it's a kid's 37 yeah not the same right so talk to us about talk to us a little bit about how do you get your shinais to be the best for nito so so like you said, if you if you just buy a standard 3.7, it's going to be a kid's shinai, and it's going to have a very thin ska, which I find very uncomfortable. They're also uncomfortably light. So um, you can use a light shinai. Um, for Nito, I think the minimum weight is 460 grams or 440 grams, something like that. I actually prefer a very thick ska, but basically the thickest I can get. Mm -hmm. And... The second most important thing to me is I personally like Kobangata, the oval grip. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, not, that's not too important, I think, as long as you can get a thick ska. Now, the shinai that I'm using right now are um, specific uh, Nito shinai from uh, the Ibogu website. They are Kobangata, thick ska that are dobari. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dobari is nice for a nice uh, whippy motion. It's a, a faster tip. But uh, to my mind, uh, Koto Shinai are just fine. Mm -hmm. You tend to get a more firm strike with Koto. Um, so those are just fine. Um, with the method that, uh, with the method I've been taught, since uh, the focus is on the Chushin or balance point of the Shinai, let me show you what I mean by cool. that. So I have a shinai here. Hmm. Um, I put a piece of tape on here so that you can see exactly where it is. So the balance point, it balances on that spot. So the shinai wants to rotate around that spot. So um, since I focus on that spot rather than the tip of the shinai or my hand, uh, the difference between koto and dobari isn't too important in my opinion in in this method. Yeah. So as long as I can get a thick ska and preferably uh, kobangata, um, that's that's what I like to go with. Okay. Um, I've been wanting to try one of those hexagonal uh, ska. I haven't uh, I haven't gotten one of those yet though. But I hear they're very uh, a lot of people really like those. So I just now that you talk about it, I'm gonna make a video about it because I just got one. Uh, I got a couple because you know you never you never just get one shinai right. No. <laughs> Um, so I got click off five anyways, uh, but they're, they're very, they're very nice the way they feel in the hand and it's, I think they're, they grip, they grip easier in the sense of like they stick the, to the cote. I think they, uh, they kind of line up to the grooves in your fingers nicely. Is that, uh, is that the idea? Uh, let me, hold on. I can, I can tell you. Okay, I'm, I'm very interested in these, so. I literally got them this week, so I, I was only able to wow. do one practice. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, John is saying uh, the book that you showed, is that the book that uh, was co-written with uh, Dano Sensei? I'm not sure if, if uh, Dano Sensei uh, wrote it. Um, the author on the cover is Sasaki Sensei from Musashikai. Mm. Um, I think when this came out, Dano Sensei was doing videos as the road to Yondan Kendo. So mm. I believe he was Sandan at the time. Um, if there's another Nito book that uh, that he co-wrote, 
uh, I'd love to get a hold of it. Nice. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like that's that's what Jan just said. So maybe he'll comment about it in a second. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'll have to look into that. I'd, I'd yeah. love to. I'd love to get my hands on it. So you're right. It does the 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 hexagonal. Uh, no octagonal. Sorry, the octagonal shape does line up here, right here with with this part of my finger, and it does it does get. For me, what I felt on the practice on Wednesday was because of the shape. It just kind of has like a better a stickiness to the to the palm of the cote, right? Uh, that being said, yes, it does have a little bit of an edge here. Maybe that would help on the as well on the feel, but it does feel it does feel good. It it, it really feels good. Um, only one practice, and I didn't do much because there were only beginners that day, so I can't. I haven't, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep you updated. <laughs> okay. Um, so before you found the, just, just because not everybody's lucky to have Ibogu as their supplier. So before you found the Shinais, anything that you were doing to Shinais, uh, were you cutting your Shinais that's for, for Nito or that, that's it? You just got another yeah, modification? So I would, uh, rather than using um, the standard three sevens, because like I said, the SCA's too, too thin, it's just uncomfortable for my hands, I would get a three nine that I uh, felt was comfortable and cut mainly from the SCA area because I wanted to move the, the dull mm -hmm. or the, uh, the thicker part, the thicker bulb of the, um, of the Shinai towards my hands. Yeah. So I would cut at the bottom uh to, to shorten it to a, a to a three seven i see i see uh but since uh since i have access to these um i've cut a couple down but it's much easier to buy them of and course. these are uh pretty comfortable to begin nice. with nice okay um so you you do you do nito full-time right mm -hmm. so would you recommend as the person is coming up into their Nito to switch fully to, to Nito or spend their time half and half or so on? Um, I think it's probably a mistake to completely neglect Chudan. Uh, for instance, um, I don't do uh, Katate Suburi, mm -hmm. uh, at least in the dojo. I do Suburi with a 3-9 along with everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, I do some Kihon Waza uh, with a three nine occasionally, mostly I switch over to my daisho, my um, my three seven and my shoto, to do all the waza. But um, I still practice a bit personally with uh, uh, a three nine. Um, but if you were to switch to something like uh, nito or jodan, I think it's important to um, to focus on it. If you're focusing on two different things, you won't. Uh, develop either one quite as uh, fully as you could if you if you give it the proper focus. I see. I see. So focus on on Nito if you're going to switch to Nito, but don't completely neglect Chudan. Mm -hmm. Understand. Um, so the etiquette of practice, like how is your approach when you're practicing against you know against senseis? And differently, how you practice against lower ranks. What are some of the point difference or key difference that you approach these practices? So when I practice with senseis, uh, doing something like Goro Geiko, um, I just try to do uh, my best kendo. I, um, I want them to uh, have the opportunity to uh, show me my own weaknesses. Mm -hmm and give me critique on my kendo. So I try to do the best waza I can, try to do the cleanest menuchi, kote uchi, douchi I can do, mm -hmm. and try to maintain proper mai and everything else as best I can. Um, I, I just try to do the cleanest uh, kendo I can while trying to get ipon, just giving them my best spirit, um, just like you would from Chudan. Now with kohai, um, if someone is not yet in Bogu, for instance, I typically do one-handed chudan with them. Mm -hmm. I, uh, 
I would just do Chudan, but uh, I got tired of walking back and forth, placing my Sholto down and everything. Yeah. So I've worked on doing Chudan with one hand so that I can make openings the same way I would, you know, keeping the Tsukagashira in center, even if I don't have my left hand on the Shinai yeah. and, and all that. But once someone's in Bogu, um, even if they're new to Bogu, I like to practice with, uh, in Nito with them. Uh, and for that, I try to think of um, what I want them to do mm. and try to coax them into doing it. So I, I try to put a lesson into, into the, the Jigeko. So I practice uh, Hikitate Geiko, which is um, pulling someone up. Okay. So the idea isn't to beat someone down, it's to pull them up yes. to where you are. So, um, for instance, I'll, I'll do attacks where I try to go slightly too fast for them mm -hmm. to react to it sometimes, rather than going as fast as I can, um, slow it down to where they can almost, uh, almost defend against it, almost do Suryage. Um I'll give uh, slightly larger openings than usual, um, not too large. I want them to still have to have to fight, fight for it and right, try yeah. to get it. Um, I'll do things like hit Colte and leave my men open for a uh, for a moment after that. So I want them to um, uh, not give up if if they get struck. You know, just hit anyway. So I'll hit Colte and let them have men because it doesn't matter if they get hit. Strike back anyway. You know, keep your spirit up. But then, if it takes a little too long, I'll then you know close up and uh, deny the the menuchi, you know things like that. I want, yeah. I want to coax them into doing their best kendo against me, even if they're a little confused. I want them to do a nice men, a nice kote, a nice do. Mm, so I, I try to devise ways to um, almost trick them into doing it. I, I see, I see. <laughs> that's good. That's good. And that, uh, in my experience, that also helps with you understanding how to implement this higher level uh, kendo elements, right? So... I think, I think so. Mm. Uh, I especially... think if you can coax someone to doing what you want them to do at a higher level, you continue to try to coax people into doing what you want them to do so that you can respond to respond to what you want rather mm. than what they want. Yes, 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 totally. Um, okay, so... Uh, just quick little question here last and this is the last question about you know how to practice and stuff like that we'll move into the higher levels of kendo in a second but etiquette of practicing at other dojos or you know when people when you go visiting senses and stuff like this is there anything specific that you do like you let them know before you go that you do nito i don't know yes well in my case uh the senses at the dojos nearby all know me mm. so um if i email saying i'd, I'd like to visit they know I want to do Nito. And I've been lucky where everybody's been completely welcoming of it and um, they've just asked me to practice Nito. So um, it's been extremely easy for me. But um, I think, especially if you don't know the sensei, if you've never been to this dojo, um, you should let them know that you practice Nito and ask um, if they would um, if they would be comfortable with you practicing Nito at their dojo, or if they want you to stick to Chudan so as not to confuse the students. And um, I think just make sure that you're ready and willing to do uh, what the sensei want you to do and to fit into the sort of culture of that dojo. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, definitely, because that's you don't want to be the one sticking out, you know, thinking that you're better than anybody, I guess, right? Um, let me see. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about the distance uh, when doing Nito against Chudan, or even, I guess, even Nito, right? So how do you gauge your distance? What is the, the right distance for you? Not necessarily to attack, but right, what's the right distance before you come in and, and make the decision to make the attack? So I like to sort of hover just uh, outside of range where the Shinai touch. I like to hover close by so that they can feel that my Shoto is 
close to their sword, but not necessarily touching it. So by the time they connect, and maybe I'm able to do um, uh, Uchi Otoshi uh, striking down or Harai where I try to sweep out of the way, uh, it's maybe too late for them to respond. Um, typically, people uh, a lot of the time won't let you come close enough to to touch, like, um, let the uh, Kensens come together. They'll mm -hmm. want to stand out here a little bit. Um, um, sorry, let me, let me, let, let's do something. You want me to play one of the videos and, and so you can see it from the, from the one of the videos you sent me? Sure. Okay, cool. Give me one second. Let me, let me set that up real quick. Okay. okay. Let me make sure that everything's set up here. Let me find your window. Uh, okay. Okay. Can you see? Can you see the screen? Can you see the video? Okay. okay. Perfect. So let me just make sure that I pass you on to the next. Okay. Perfect. So everything should be here. So you have. Can you see my mouse on the? No. Right. I cannot see your mouse. You cannot. But everybody in the stream, people can see it. I think. Yeah, they can see it, but you can't. Sorry. So okay. So right now. I, I froze the frame right after you took your Kamai. And okay, so you you can start approaching. So tell us a little bit about your approach on distance with when with Nito. So at this point, I'm slightly, uh, slightly outside of range unless I reach with my Shoto mm -hmm. uh, to his Shinai. At this point, I can strike with the Daito but mm -hmm. it's very dangerous because I don't have physical control of his sword. So typically, I would want to come in slightly closer, which I, I, uh, I believe I'm about to do, to strike uh, uh, whatever target I'm going for. Mm -hmm. So this right here is the distance I will usually wait in before approaching. So at this point, you, you pressure, you did your initial pressure, your initial summit in, and you're gauging whether the opponent is going to close the distance back up before you make the decision of throwing the Shoto into into the the fight. That's right. If they uh, if they suddenly back up, um, then I have to be uh, I have to be aware of that. If I try to strike as they back up, mm -hmm. um, then my Daito is in a dangerous position. Uh, my men is open. My Colte is open. Um, so just like uh, when someone's practicing Nukiwaza, mm -hmm. I don't want them to be able to um, escape my attack and then attack me while I'm open. I see, I see. Um, now, you said at this, at this point right here, if, if the opponent comes in, you said your Kota is, is available, right? Like if the opponent will come in with, without you doing any reaction and your men as well, right? Because it will be kind of hard for you to to block the man, that's what you said? That's right. Okay, cool. Um, now, before that, you were a little bit... Okay, so you would say right here will be your initial distance, right? Like if you're in a, in a, in a Shiai coming out of the Sonkyo, this will be the the distance itself, right? Uh, yeah, this, this is the distance where I would uh, do Kakegoi. I would do my initial Kiai. Mm -hmm and then step in to start um, to start the match, to start to try to build up Tame or mm -hmm. um, tension and try to exert uh, my pressure through Seme at this distance and then step in to make it a little bit um, uh, closer and stronger, I think. Okay, so just just for everybody in the stream, just to make sure we're on the same page. So can you see my little Tushin eyes that I have here? Uh, you, you see my in my camera. You see the the two shinies that I have. I can. Okay, cool. So at this point, I'm guessing because you just came out of Sonkyo, you are, uh, you know, pretty much at, at the moment before you you're touching the swords. And then when you start taking the point, that step where we talked before, it's right. It would be the equivalent of right when we are starting to feel the shinai of the opponent. If both of us were to be in Ito. Correct? That's right. Okay, good, good, good. Because of the shorter uh, length of the Shoto, 
um, we're slightly close when the Shinai are near each other, we're slightly closer than typical. Okay. So I'm just trying, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure that everybody, maybe if they don't have experience in Nito, they kind of start relating to what they already know. So just to make sure that we're all on the same page, that's all. Okay. So let me see, let me, uh, let me see. So the distance, okay. So since you don't have that contact with the sword until pretty much the moment where you you make the decision to strike, uh, how do you approach uh, that communication? And and the semi, what are some of the things that you do physically to to give pressure and to also understand when maybe the person has? Okay, let me rephrase this. Let me let me make it <laughs> simpler. So, what are some of the things that you do physically to give the pressure to your opponent, and what are some of the things that you're looking for? to understand when there is an opening from your opponent. So, um, I, uh, in my opinion, Seme starts from the feet. So I'll start to push in with my right foot a little bit and see how they react to that. Mm -hmm. If they pull back or push forward, you know, that sort of thing. And then with the Shoto, holding a fairly solid uh, Kamai from the Shoto, not waving it around too much. I want it to be uh, in the center. I want to be able to, uh, in essence, dominate the center. Mm -hmm. So I'll move it a little bit to respond to their Shinai so that, they, uh, so that they're always aware that if their Shinai is close to my Shoto, that I can attack it. I want them to always be afraid of that. Yes, that, that I, you can catch the, it. That's right. And then I try to demonstrate Seme through the Daito, through um, gently pushing forward. And I try to gently push forward from, from this position where I've placed this tape on here so you can see it on camera, mm -hmm. the, um, the balance point of the Shinai. So I keep that in the center. And instead of thinking about pushing my hand forward or pushing the tip forward, I think about pushing the center of the Shinai forward so that they can feel it. They can feel it coming. Even if it's not moving a lot, mm -hmm. I want them to suddenly feel it's coming. It's coming. I have to do something now. And so a lot of the time I don't even need to physically touch the Shinai. They'll react to that. They'll go to block men opening up Kote. This is just exactly the same as from Chudan. Okay. You push in, they'll, they'll block men instinctively, which opens Kote and Do, or they'll pull the Shinai down, or you have to be aware of how your uh, opponent responds to that sort of movement so you can take advantage of it. I see. And if you know how they're going to move, you've already won. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, if you're at least anticipating their, their reaction, it's different than just reacting to their motion. I like that. Um... Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about the the tenochi and some of the motions that you use for striking with uh, the daito. Mm -hmm. So, the tenochi that I use is basically the same as regular tenochi, mm -hmm. squeezing, but I do it in a sort of quick three-step motion or pinky, ring finger, mm -hmm. middle finger. So I kind of roll roll yeah. them along mm -hmm. but as quickly as i can other than that it's the same squeezing motion but the key to the method that that i've been taught for katate waza instead of striking from the wrist where the fulcrum is my hand mm -hmm. i use the chushin the balance point as the fulcrum okay so let me see if i can move back a little so instead of striking here mm -hmm. i strike here, if you can see where the blue tape is, yeah. that moves forward and okay. it rotates around that spot. I see. So that way, it doesn't matter where my hand is. My hand can be out here, uh, like up here in an awkward position. Mm -hmm. As long as I rotate it around that spot, I can still strike. <laughs> that is um, pretty interesting. I can even strike from the other side as long as I keep Chushin in center. Um, and one of the videos that I shared that we can look at later 
is uh, Fuji Sensei demonstrating striking from Chushin. Yes. That he can, uh, his video demonstrates it um, better than I can, I think. Uh, yes, actually, you know what? I remember you sent me that video. Let me make sure that I have it uh, on display while, while we keep talking. Um, so, uh, Discipline says, against Nito players, you have to start circling to the right early on and pressure their Daito to close the distance. So, Discipline, we're going to talk about fighting with Nito and against Nito in a little bit. I'm not ignoring your... Your question, we'll, we'll, we'll bring it up. We'll bring it up in a minute. Okay, so you you rotate the, you, you keep the center of, you keep the balance point of the Shinai in the center that allows you to, you know, pretty much put your hand wherever you need it to be and create different angles. I, I, I never saw it that way. Right. Uh, but I can see where you can have a lot of creativity uh, on, on the approaches that you can take based on this. Um... So besides keeping this in mind uh, for the attack, besides keeping the center in mind, um, what else do you need to keep in mind when it comes to maybe shoulders, joints, and stuff like that? The reason why I ask, normally, like I said, matter of fact, my motto in the in the dojo is don't get injured at all costs, right? Yes. <laughs> so, yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so what are some of the things that we need to keep in mind to avoid injury? Maybe, you know... Uh, joint problems, uh, golfers, tennis elbow, and so on. Uh, yes. So uh, when I started practicing Nito, uh, uh, without specific instruction from a high-ranking sensei, I was trying to emulate what I was seeing mm -hmm. uh, as best I could. So this was before I, uh, I was taught to use chushin. I was using my wrist to cut, to cut out from, from the uh -huh. wrist. Mm -hmm. And I actually developed a pitcher's elbow which is golfer's elbow and tennis elbow at the same time. Uh. And so I had to do some physical therapy for that. Making sure that you avoid jerky motions and using chushin to let the shinai move in the way it wants to, you can avoid uh, that sort of repetitive uh, stress injury. Because the shinai wants to rotate around this point already. Mm -hmm. So if you let it do what it wants to do, well, you just extend it and let it rotate naturally, you don't have to put a lot of force into it, which lessens the stress on your joints. And doing that for um, over 15 years, um, mm -hmm. I haven't had a single shoulder or elbow injury since learning about that. I see. Um, that's saved my joints. <laughs> I see. So not to be given medical advice at all, Please, nobody oh, take no, this no, as no, medical. No, no, no I'm, I'm just giving a little disclaimer for everybody. Please, nobody takes this as like medical advice or anything. But what are some of the, maybe some of the exercises you learned through your physical therapy or some of the things that you can recommend us to stay within good health and things that we can do outside of the dojo to make sure that to keep uh, our joints and tendons healthy? So, um, you know, and bearing in mind, I'm not a doctor. Uh, <laughs> So I don't want to give anyone medical advice, but what helped me was, um, I think the most beneficial thing was, uh, uh, a device called a, a flex bar. It's uh, sort of a rubber. Tube. Yes. I, I have one. I have two because I had, I had it too, right? This thing. Yep. That's, that's it. <laughs> yep. Using that and uh, using the exercises that yes. uh, the doctor showed me, um, that fixed it over time. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but since uh, since adopting the method of striking from Chushin, I haven't had any sort of joint injury in my arm since. Uh, I haven't had to do it again. So. Nice, 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 nice. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, I I started doing that, and it definitely I can tell I can tell the difference. But again, this is not medical advice, anybody. Um, okay, so. We talked a little bit about testing Nito. I kind of want to talk a little bit about the Kihon exercises that to do in Nito. Uh, what are some of the, the things that we can do? Let me make sure that... Uh, would you like me to play the, the video that... Oh, yeah. You... Uh, he demonstrates... Uh, Sensei demonstrates Chushin uh, very nicely here. Okay. You'll see uh, him striking... Uh, from down, bringing his hand up, rotating the shinai, 
and then striking, keeping his left foot, uh, keeping his rear foot back, and then doing uh, Toby Komi Man. Okay, give me one second. Let me make sure that I have the right video in there. So, sorry, I didn't. Uh, this, want... this is a different one. Oh, oh, this okay. is uh, the Kihon Waza with uh, Sato Sensei. Okay, so this one that I have here, you want you want me to show or the other one? Uh, the other one first, please. Okay, cool. Let me let me make sure that I'm I'm setting it up. You can see uh, the stream cannot see what I'm doing, but you can see it, so that's why maybe why. Okay. Um, let me one second. One quick second, guys. Making sure everything shows up nice. Okay. And we're going to be showing Sensei's videos before my own, so it's a little bit like uh, going to open Nike Might and going after <laughs> an amazing comedian, and suddenly he's like, "Oh, and this is this is my my attempt." Uh, that's funny. No, no, no. It's 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 good. I think it makes it so much better because we're not perfect. It makes it so much better to be reli uh, relatable because when people go back there and try at home, it's not going to look anywhere near what Sensei's look like. So I think it's it's a good example. Um, let me see, let me catch up with any comments. In case of say Nito, uh, circle direction of their die to hand. Okay, no, somebody talked about how to fight against Nito. Okay, cool. Uh, let me... Let me play this right here. Okay, everybody can see this video. Let me make sure we have sound for everybody. Perfect. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Something else is playing in the background. Okay. Perfect. So. I can't hear the video. That's my bad. You should be able to hear it now. Mm -hmm. oh. You see at this point, mm -hmm. Sensei is striking, standing still. You can see the rotation of the Shinai at the um, balance point rather than from his wrist as he brings his hand up. Okay, as so he brings his hand up, I'm gonna go frame by frame. To understand it so he he throws the arm forward and rotates the shinai on that balance point i see i see especially you can see it's more evident towards the end of the swing right ah right, hold on, it went too far so like right about here you can start seeing how he lets the shinai do its thing where he wants to rotate Rather than pushing it, pushing it in from the bottom, you're just letting the Shinai do the do the rotation. They're very interesting, very interesting. That's right. In this way, uh, you don't have to fight gravity. Mm. You don't have to um, do all the work. The Shinai will do uh, much of it for you. I understand. Now, you you could you could obviously attack from this position uh, in a in an actual fight. I'm guessing that this will be the equivalent to small men, right? Yes, I practice. I practice this way sometimes when we're doing small men in the dojo. Mm, nice. So we're having a little bit of the same thing now from a little bit of a further distance. Uh, this will be, I guess, you know, from Jordan version of it. But at the end, it's the same thing, which is, it's refreshing to see this so similar because you know a lot of senseis will tell you small men is the same thing as big men here we can see it <laughs> yeah with nito with one hand you can really see the little details because it moves in such a way it's just the same with sensei stepping forward fumi come fumi kitty So this is this is what I was talking about when it comes to the the fumikiri the the skill for the for the back leg because I cannot say left or right because it can be switched obviously, but here and this is one of the things that I notice a lot from beginners and even people when they they get up there but they're dragging their leg is because they're missing the point right here of the back leg of kicking off the floor like he does he's so sharp on on moving the 
the leg. It, you can see the leg is not dragging, it's moving sharply. An enormous a part of your, you know, the energy, the power for your attack comes mm. from the rear leg. Fumikiri Correct. Fumikiri is so key to proper kendo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, um, you asked the question, what do people do against you, Ash, the, that just makes you want to laugh before you beat them? Oh, I'm guessing that he... Don't laugh at people. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what he's talking about. I'm guessing something he practiced with you. Uh, yeah, we practice together every week. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't know. What, what was the last thing you tried against me? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know. I don't That's laugh at people for uh, for experimenting with things. Yeah, um, no. Normally, normally I laugh a lot when somebody gets me like very nice because it's just like yeah. you know that's that's the one that normally I'm. It's, it's I enjoy it. And anyways, okay, let's keep going. Oh, by the way, um says that nothing, everything. Oh, no, nothing he tries works. So. Oh, that's <laughs> not true. Yeah, don't talk like that. So now we're starting to see a little bit more, uh, a little bit of a shoulder control as, as approaching the target, right? Yeah, a little bit of Osai, mm -hmm. um, steadily holding down the Shinai, uh, very gently. So breaking it down, something I want to maybe explore a little bit with you the timing of engagement, right? Because normally, especially when I'm doing small men, the way I try to see it is that I, I want to keep my hands to myself. Actually, I made a video about it this past week. I, I, I try to keep my hands to myself until about the time when I engage the Fumikiri, right? That's when I, I guess I, I, I shoot my, my shot. So what is the right time to engage the Shoto? And what's the right time to engage the Daito when it comes to that? I'm guessing I'm going to go on a limb and guess that the Daito, you do engage it kind of the same time as I do with Ito, where you engage it at that moment of Fumikiri uh, cl or close to it, right? I believe the timing between Shudan and Nito is uh, basically the same. Hmm. You want everything to happen simultaneous. Um, you want the, uh, the work with the Shoto and the Daito and Fumikomi to happen at the same time so that there's no cl uh, clue given early as to what you're doing. Mm. Uh, you don't want to, for instance, strike their sword out of the way with um, Harai mm -hmm. and then wait a beat and then strike men Yeah, because they'll recover. Uh, you want your Fumikomi, Fumikiri, uh, Kodachi, Daito all working in unison. Okay, nice. So let's break it down slow motion if you don't mind for a second here. So he's approaching. Now, I see a slight reach, right? Like he's slightly moving the hand as well when he starts moving the body, right? In here. And that's, I'm guessing, to kind of uh, offset the timing between his body movement and the sore getting there, right? Okay. Now, at this point, obviously, he, he, caught, on to, he caught on to the sword. Now he has control. Much harder for the Ito player to pretty much do anything, right? And, yeah, right, right about the time when he shoots right the body. Mm -hmm, goes, goes for that strike. So, again, a little bit of slow motion again. So yeah, you you can see it by the extension of the of the toes, like he he's engaging. He starts the motion with the top hand down as he engages the the back leg, and then he does the tenouchi, pretty much the same way as we do do as men, right? Engages that hand right at the moment that he pushes off with the with the fumikiri. Very That's interesting. Right. Very As you can see, Sensei is incredibly skilled. He passed uh, Hachidan with Nito. So he's uh, he has a lot of practice. Mm. Cool. 
Quijote. Yeah, this time you can also you can you can definitely see the engagement of both hands simultaneously. Very interesting. Cool. Okay, so this is this is talking about the engagement, the the how to do the the basic practice. Um, what are some of the things to keep in mind when you are doing? Oh, what are some of the things that you learn to keep in mind when you're doing the Kihon practice with Nito that may be different from Ito? Um, so with Ito, you naturally use your hands in unison because they're both on the same sword. Mm. With Nito, you need to do the same thing. You can't neglect your Shoto when you're striking with a Daito. Uh, for a good Ipon, you need to use them in unison. So even if you don't, um, say, touch your opponent's shinai with your shoto, yeah. you need to use it for seme or counterbalancing. You need to keep it alive. Mm -hmm. So uh, usually I have people who receive for me just hold sudan so that I can either strike their shinai or press it out of the way or, or deal with it that way. You want to use both hands at the same time. And so that's a skill you definitely want uh, want to work on for uh, for Nito, doing everything simultaneously rather than one two. It's just yeah. one, one. Nice. Okay. Um, let me see. So you talked a little bit about receiving uh, for for Ito in Nito. So what are some of the things that we should keep in mind when receiving for Nito? Uh, as, as Motodachi? Um, basically just receive like you're receiving for anyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, opening Dull is just the same. Uh, opening Men and Kolte is just the same. I usually prefer if, unless we're doing a specific Waza, uh, Oji Waza or a counter attack mm -hmm. against something specific, I like uh, my partners to hold Shudan so that I can move their Shinai out of the way uh, with a different Waza. Okay. Um, one thing that maybe, you know, it, it's, it's, in, it's something I try to do when I'm fighting against either, or when I'm practicing against, uh, Jordan or Nito is I try to keep in mind the Kamai, try to give them a realistic Kamai for the practice, not just, and I'm saying this just in general, because I, I notice sometimes that people, when they don't know how to fight against Nito, they just do the regular Chudan, right? But it's not quite the same, right? Yeah. Um... There are several methods to fighting against Nito, and one of them is adjusting your Kamai to um, uh, to Hira or uh, flat Sagan Kamai. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's sort of... Uh, let me grab a Shoto here. Sort of, if my arm's up here, mm -hmm. sort of rather than having the Shinai in center, having it over here threatening my uh, Daito Kote. Uh -huh. So I'll have it over here, or doing Kasumi Kamai for someone doing uh, Miginito, okay. like to threaten this Kote. Make it uncomfortable to move forward, because they can hit it as soon as, as soon as I start to move, strike it. I see, I see. So, yeah, th maybe this is something that, that I don't think it gets talked about enough, but for, for the Kamai that we should take against the two different types of Nito, right? So, you recommend especially for practicing, you know, keeping the thread on the kote as we stand in front of the, the nitoka. Yeah, I think that's uh, one, of, uh, one of the stronger strategies. Um, it's very similar to uh, how people uh, tend to fight against Jodan, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, keeping pressure on that kote because if there's enough pressure to make the uh, Jodan or Nito player um, uncomfortable, they might not be able to attack with Sutemi or their whole, uh, or throwing them their entire person into that attack. Yeah, they might hold something back, mm. um, and that'll give you an opportunity to um, to attack them. I see. I see. 
Uh, quick question for everybody that's on the stream, uh, because Jan, you're saying that your stream is lagging. I just want to make sure everybody's having a good experience. Maybe, maybe Jan, you're having some connection issues. If anybody can let me know how, how your connection is, I'll appreciate it. And if you haven't, please hit the like button. Just make sure that this thing gets pushed out to more people out there. Okay. Um, so Kihondres, we saw Man, Kote, and... You sent me some videos of the Kote Man. You want to watch the other video you sent me from Sensei, or you want to go into yours? Okay. Uh, let's watch the other video from Sensei. Okay. One second. I believe it should be this one. So this video is Sato Sensei mm -hmm. uh, from Chiba demonstrating, um, demonstrating Waza using Migi or right-handed Nico. Okay. Very nice impact. Very nice impact on that man. Mm-hmm. You see, that man um, was more uh, vertical to cut through a shinai if someone responds or tries to block, just cutting down through mm -hmm. it. Also, oh, this, yeah, because I was going to tell you that the, this man looks slightly different, right? Mm -hmm. Than the one that he was doing before. So it's just a situational practice as well, right? Like he's practicing how to deal with another type of counter, I'm guessing. That's right. So in here, let's break it down a little bit. So he's okay. So he he shifts the left hand. I mean the the top hand, the right hand, into a little bit above, and he's coming down more like we would do uh, regular katata men, I guess, right? Like if if we were doing like more like a Jordan style, I guess, or. Not Jordan style, yeah, but yeah. So this is a, a like a Kiriotoshi man mm, um, mm, 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 cutting mm. down through their sword. If someone were to were to block here, you'd cut right down through it, knock their sword down, and take the men anyway. Yes, and and you can and you can see that uh, as soon as you pointed out, it, it made a lot of sense because you can see it at this point when he starts approaching, he he shifts the uh, the starting point of the sword when he engages the swing. He yes. goes from here into top. I don't know if you, everybody saw it, but hold on. Right here, then he's going to go top. And then from here, he engages the man. And it's a different type of man than we saw before. Very interesting. Now, hitting the cote on this side... Hitting the cut on this side can be very uncomfortable, I'm, I'm guessing, right? Uh, so this uh, method, um, they call ku no ji kote. Mm -hmm. uh, ku in uh, hiragana looks like uh, a left angle bracket on your keyboard. Y yes, yes, yes. So when reaching across the body to hit kote, mm -hmm. your arm and the shinai form a ku shape. So you come across and yes. down with my cables in the way and down onto the kote. Yes. Um, with enough practice, that actually becomes fairly comfortable to do. Uh, I actually find it a little bit more comfortable to hit someone's left kote fr from the uh, from my left hand, mm -hmm. putting across to hit the left kote. I find that a little more comfortable than hitting yeah. the right kote. I see. There's um, far fewer opportunities to hit left kote, but when they, when they come up, I always try to take them. And I wanted to maybe, okay, I'll... I'll We'll, we'll put up we'll put a pin on, on this one because I want to talk about what's Ipon, you know how how Ipon from from Nito and this was something I wanted to ask you about the left cote against Ito okay so we'll okay. put a pin we'll put a pin on that one uh, okay cool we can keep watching the other So this is striking Kote from a three-point block. Okay. They're raising their shinai. They're holding their shinai at an angle 
to defend where they can defend against men, dull, and culte. Uh -huh. so this is um, adapting to that angle and striking it. Let me see. That's that's it, it's kind of a little bit the same. Correct me if I'm wrong. The the same approach of the cote when uh, like a morote cote from Jordan, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's uh, the, the angle that it looks very similar when they do morote cote. Very very similar. Um, which is you know this is one of the reasons why I, I mean I learned the hard way that this is one of the ways that you do not want to cover against Jordan players, right? Because it's extremely easy for them to get that. So be careful with yeah. that against Nito as well. Uh, Avi, you said you need to go tonight for Keiko. Okay, go to practice, man. Uh, thank you for passing by. And you will get some more Nito content. Um, okay, so... One of the things that, you know, it's, it's taught when doing Kote from Ito at different angles has to do with uh, making your Shinai kind of be in the same parallel uh, area as your opponents, right? You want to, you don't want to be perpendicular. So for example, if I have machine out here, you don't want to hit the Kote like in a, in a, in a perpendicular angle. You want to hit it kind of the same line where the Shinai is. Um, I, I can guess by what I'm seeing here is very similar, if not the same to yeah, do sort in of, Ito. Um, when striking Kote, uh, one of the methods to stay on target is to keep your Shinai approximately one fist diff Dip, uh, distance from their shinai the whole way down mm -hmm. so you can follow their shinai just next to it right to their kote you're nice. approximately one fist distance you'll mm -hmm. strike the uh datotsubui. you'll strike the uh kote um the target area so if imagining that my finger is the is a fist you mean like being this close to the mm -hmm. to the shinai to go there okay nice obviously fingers a bad representation but we got the point. <laughs> okay. Um, let's keep going. Very interesting, though. It's the Kihon basic doll from Nito. Mm -hmm. uh, you strike on the side and pass through on the same side. Okay. And this is dull against uh, three point blocking again. And the other way, uh, Sampo Mamori, uh, like you see at a lot of tournaments when people rush in guarding everything. Everything except that dull. <laughs> yeah, everything but, but Gyaku or Hidari uh, left side dull. Yes. Very nice, very nice. Um, yeah, it's very, it's very important. I, I always like to try to make drills where you practice against situations. So it's, it's very, it's very interesting to see here. Now, um, just to clarify for everybody, just to make sure that we're on the same page, the the sunshine, the follow through with Nito, is there anything to keep in mind different than what we do for Ito? I think it's mainly the same. You want to, um, the most important thing is to um, uh, not let your mind wander. You want to be aware of your opponent and what they're doing. Turn around ready to, ready to attack, ready to respond to an attack. Um, uh, I think it's important to, to stay in a mindset where you're not reacting to your opponent. Um, like jumping at, at what they're doing, but responding to it. You know, they strike men, I have a response to defeat the men. Yeah. I, I'm not just like trying to dodge out of the way. You want to stay aware and focused on, on the match. Nice, nice. Um, and uh, I think it's basically the, the same as, as from Chudan. Uh, the only reason, the only reason it made me think about it, uh, I think it was in one of the cotes that I saw. Let me see something. Um, no, this is though as well. Ah, I think it was this cote. Okay, so you know, sometimes uh, I post sometimes videos on Instagram and stuff like that of people that I find, and sometimes there's there's people that are extremely, let's say, picky 
when it comes to Sanshin. And what I think what you said is a great, um, great way to to put it. Make sure that you're alert to the to the opponent because some people get into this, they get stuck into this mentality that to have good Sanshin you have to go through and turn around. And I don't think I, I don't agree with that because obviously as you can see here. You know, he doesn't go through, but he is showing his alertness toward his opponent. Zanshin isn't a physical action, it's a state of mind. And you want to be able to demonstrate to judges that you, um, you are maintaining Zanshin, but it's not a specific action. I agree. I agree 100%. Awesome. Cool. Uh, but again, same thing as we would do for Ito is the same thing for... Um, you know, for Nito as well. Uh, will it be okay if we pass on to Kirikaeshi? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, because I think this is a big question when people come to about how to train Nito and how to do Kirikaeshi and, and all these basic drills. I think it's very important to make sure that we have. Okay. There, there are a few methods for Kirikaeshi. This is the, the method that I was taught. Okay, cool. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about some of the different ones. So for the first go through, mm -hmm. it's pretty similar to Chudan, mm -hmm. where you step in, strike showmen, uh, come to Tsubizeti uh, maybe Tayatari a little bit so they move back to um, uh, Uchima or striking mm -hmm. distance, and then do Sayumen right to left um, with Okuriyashi. Yeah. The second set um, is going to be with the Kodachi. Okay. And I start, instead of with regular Fumikomi, I'm using Fumikaishi. So I'll have uh, my, I'll start with my left foot forward, mm -hmm. but I'll do Fumikomi onto my right foot. Okay. I swap feet during that to mm -hmm. get a little extra distance. I see. And then I'll strike with the Kodachi. Uh, most of the time I'll ask my partner to let me just strike men with the Kodachi, but I didn't bother here because um, I practice both ways. And then, if you notice, while I'm striking with the Kodachi, instead of using Okuriyashi, you know, the typical shuffling footwork, I'm using Ayumiyashi, where I move forward with the right, then mm -hmm. the left, then the right, and I hit during a Hikitsuke, when my legs come back together. Okay. Uh, so that's what I'm about to attempt to do, at least. <laughs> cool. Nice. And this obviously has to do with getting the right distance for the for the uh, the, the choto the kodachi, right? Like to, to make sure that you get there, you cross your feet because you're always gonna generate a little bit extra uh, distance by doing this, correct? Yes. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, again, something very, very essential to learn to adjust your distance. That's why you wanna make sure that you have both both feet develop for for this drills for you know for nito um anything specific anything special to keep in mind uh or any anything to help us move from one side to the other especially when you're using the daito uh as you do the kirikaeshi so um the secret is in using chushin or the balance point of the shinai. Mm -hmm. By pressing the balance point forward and striking men, I'm able to pull the shinai back towards my head, focusing on the balance point, mm -hmm. and then twist and let the let it rotate at the balance point and go from side to side, so that I don't need to swing my arm left and right all around. I'm letting the shinai do most of the work, rotating around that. Uh, really, chushin is. The, the key to the method that I've been taught. It's, uh, it allows you to, to move and attack from all sorts of directions fairly quickly. I see. Uh, so, you know, normally when we're taught Kirikashi in Ito, we're told keep your left hand in the center. Uh, obviously, you're keeping your left hand in the center, but also the balance point of the Shinai 
it's you're keeping in the center and the tip is the one rotating around it, correct? Yes, in, in some ways I sort of replace my left hand being in center with Chushin being in center. Mm -hmm. But Chushin, uh, the balance point of the Shinai is more important than my hand. So I can move my hand around as long as, as Chushin is kept in center. I see. But I still want to keep my left hand fairly centered as well. That's mm -hmm. a much stronger position. I see, I see. So mm, just, just out of curiosity, how thick or how wide is your center line or how wide do you where you taught that your center line is? Um, I think of it as basically the width of my opponent's men. Okay. I think of anything in front of the face and and down as center. I see. I see. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, because, you know, some people say uh, it's a very thin line and they always try to stick within this very thin, thin line. And I think it's very hard to see it this way. It's yeah. just... With when striking men, I, I kind of try to stay on that line, mm -hmm. but um, for some waza, that's just a little a little too too narrow. Yeah, at least for me. Yeah. Uh, so the way the way I was taught is that my fist is like the width of my fist is like the center line. So I try to you know stay within this. I like I like also your version. You know the width of the men, uh, the target. It's it's, it's pretty good. Um, okay, so. As receiving Kirikayashi for Nito, anything to keep in mind to, you know, to make sure to, to not disturb the practice of my partner? Uh, just receive Kirikayashi like, uh, like normal. When receiving for the Kodachi, don't take smaller steps because it's a smaller sword. Mm -hmm. Take, you know, the regular larger steps um, because the Nito practitioner has to be able to uh take that amount of space anyway so you want to do it just like normal don't try to change and take small steps to, uh, to accommodate them they'll be able to uh adapt to you okay. or at least that's what we train to do nice nice um before before i move on to the next one any anything else when receiving some of the kihong practices against uh, Nito. I don't think so. I think it's uh, it's very similar to Ito. Uh, mm -hmm. Just if you're receiving for a Nito player, they might ask you to just hold center against them so they can um, use their Shoto mm -hmm. uh, physically. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, now, if you don't mind transitioning into Kotemen, right? Okay. Uh, we, we watch some of the single single waza single techniques. I guess the one that we haven't seen yet is uh, Tsuki. I, I know you you sent me a video of Tsuki, right? I believe. I don't remember. Anyways. I, I don't think I did. I don't think I sent uh, Tsuki or Hikiwaza. I ah, sure yeah, Hikiwaza. I Hikiwaza video. I didn't think of it until the next morning, and I emailed uh, my partner here. I emailed him and said, oh, we should have done Hikiwaza. Uh, <laughs> that's fun. Um, yeah, I mean... It's okay, we can talk about it. But uh, Rensoku Waza is always very, uh, I think it's so, it's so important because it, it, it opens so many doors to be able to do the Rensoku Waza, to do other techniques as well, right? You, you, I think you learned a lot of timing when it comes to uh, Rensoku Waza. So let's watch it and then you can give us some pointers on how you approach your Rensoku Waza. Solid strikes. Awesome. Okay. So tell us a little bit about, especially, I, I know it could be, because you're you're attacking with a lot of speed and power. So what are some of the things to keep in mind to control the speed and power to be able to do the men right after? Uh, so <clears throat> here, honestly, I'm hitting too hard. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I was nervous. I was, I was paying too much attention to the camera, you know? Yeah. But um, after striking the kote, uh, utilizing the, uh, the chushin again, uh, you notice the second strike, if, 
if you go to where I strike the Colte before I strike the men, mm -hmm. if you can move forward to that point. Yeah, let me let me go a little bit slow motion. So do the Colte right here. Yeah. And then. And then the Shinai will come up here mm -hmm. and it'll come up basically vertical. Yeah. And essentially I do the same technique that you saw Fuji Sensei demonstrating striking yes. from the chest, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, striking mm -hmm. Shushin from the chest. I'm just doing that after striking the Kote. So that allows me to just do another strike from that uh, fairly comfortable position. Mm -hmm. So very similar again to what we would do in Ito, right? Because when you do Kote men, you don't pull the sword to then push it again. You allow the bounce of the strike to guide you into the next uh, technique. Yeah. Yeah, Correct. so if you have prop proper shime or cutting into the target, it'll naturally bounce a proper amount, like uh, skipping a rock along a lane. Yeah. Um, it'll bounce up to a good position to strike again. Nice, yeah, nice, nice, the, nice. the same sort of thing here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and what was I going to say? Okay, so you said you said that you were hitting too hard because you, you were nervous, but regardless of that, I feel, for what I'm seeing, that if you were have to miss, if you were a missed, this technique, it wouldn't really have been a problem. You'll be able to control that, that uh, you know, the, the overswing. You will be able to control the overswing. So what do you do? How do you do this? What do you keep in mind to make sure that if you miss, you're ready for the next waza? So after I strike, I sort of pull the, the chushin back towards myself, either above my head or to chest height, mm -hmm. so that from there I can move up to guard my men against uh, a counterattack to men mm -hmm. or attack immediately again from a central position, pushing Chushin back out. So if that bounce point just comes right back towards me, it can go back out again instantly. I see, I see. Um, so one of the things that I I like to make sure that I, that I train for myself and whenever I'm training with somebody, I, I want to pass this down and I want to see how it relates to Nito. So, um, when you're when you strike, let me try to maybe put them on here. So when you strike, that you that you you hit. Let's say I hit full extension. Uh, you you do a little bit of a I guess push to get the sword to come back up, right, with the left hand. Yes. So yep. when doing it with one hand, I'm guessing, I'm assuming that you have to uh, use the one hand as two, right? So you balance out between the pushing with the left hand and the fingers on the top to create a little bit of a balance point. What's the, what's the technique there to make sure that this happens efficiently? That's right. So it's, um, it's the same way I personally do Chudan. I push out my left so I can strike. Mm -hmm. So if I strike and I want to uh, bring the sword up, I push my left hand mm -hmm. up, push my left hand up and try to, again, rotate the Chushin pushing up here and I sort of follow up behind it so I can go again. But yeah, it's the same. It's pushing up with the left hand rather than pulling back. Actually, let me put you, let me put you in a little bit bigger camera. Can you say that again and, and, and do that again? A little bit of bigger camera. Okay. So let me make sure I'm here. Yeah. So you don't want to pull back too much with the left hand. Mm -hmm. You sort of push up with mm -hmm. the left hand mm -hmm. and Shushin will come back. So you push up and then you can immediately go again. So that's basically the same as I do with Chudan. When I strike, I like to push my left hand out and mm -hmm. then strike with both hands. With Nito, I like to push that out as yeah. Shushin comes up and then rotate back out. Needless to say, it's very important to not pull the sword with your bicep, right? Like you don't want to pull, that's right. close the elbow. You want to keep that joint uh, flexible and ready for the for the technique. That's right. If you if you pull it with the bicep back, you're giving up um, you're giving up center. You're removing your sword from the fight in the middle, and um, you're also tightening your arm, which makes it a little harder to do a second attack. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, yeah, this is this is definitely one of the biggest points that I try to pass down when I'm training somebody and for myself as well. I want to make sure that my sword stays in the fight. I don't want to pull back. What you said is a very, very practical way to see it because you don't want to give away the center. But also for me, it takes much more energy and power 
and you lose yeah. a lot of control because yeah, you may be able to pull it to you quicker, but it's it's irrelevant because you won't be able to do much with a sword at that point, right? It's yeah. it's a whole whole different whole different point. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, and Let it's me largely the same as Chudan. Mm. You don't want mm. to pull it away towards yourself and away from center. You want to just push it up and hold center as best you can. I see. I see. Um, okay, let me see what other things. Okay, I do wanted to for you to kind of tell us a little bit about there's a um, there's a the video that you sent me where you use the shoto to uh, suppress or to control the opponent shinai. I see that you do different motions. Maybe you can guide us a little bit through what are the type of approaches that you have here on how you get control of your opponent shinai. So depending on how far you want their shinai to move and how firm their chudan is or how loose it is, uh, different motions from um, you might want to use osaiwaza where you sort of gently hold their shinai down mm -hmm. to um, suryotoshi where you sort of slide it down and with a quicker motion sort mm -hmm. of like uh, the 10th kata um, where you catch yes. uh, Uchidachi's sword, slide down against it, mm -hmm. and then catch. Um, or Harai Waza, Uchiyotoshi, Uchiyotoshi, or uh, Harai from the other side. There's all sorts of ways to attack your opponent's Shinai physically with your Kodachi, and you want to be comfortable with all of them, and you want to have a sense of um, what you want to do with the opponent in front of you. I see. Uh, sim similar to where if someone's holding a very firm kamai and they're pressing into center, uh, and they might overshoot opening their kote, mm. if, you, if you know that one. Or if it's a little loose, you can just push in and hit men. Yes. Different uh, waza here that I am uh, that I demonstrate are useful against different um, types of chudan. Okay, cool. So maybe as we, as, we, as we see, as we have a visual representation of them, you can tell us who is the best opponent to do ag that against. I can try. Okay, cool. <laughs> just very generic, just to give, you know, the rules are meant to be bent as well, so. <laughs> okay, so what do you call this approach? So, uh, that's my attempt at uh, Osai, mm -hmm. and with a little Suryotoshi at the end. If someone's holding a fairly strong Chudan, and I don't want to do harai and let them have the opportunity to regain center, hold my shinai, uh, kodachi against their shinai as long as possible, push out of the way, and then strike at that moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's the that's kind of the motion I would typically do against someone holding a very stiff center. Cool. Now, you said push out of the way, but I'm going to point this out because this is what I'm seeing, and I don't want this to be misinterpreted because this is something that I see a lot of beginners do when they do like harai, that they push with their arms out, but I feel that you're doing it with your tenouchi, right? You're using your wrist, your fingers, and, and the tip of your sword to push it out. But most people misinterpret that push with excessively pushing out. So I just want to play that again because I think it's a great example of doing it properly. So right here, you push in, but then at the end, you squeeze tenouchi and it gives you that snap to get the shinai out. Correct? That's right. Okay. Yeah. That's right. I don't want my arm to be too far out of position. I want to control center, not just uh, push their shinai out of center. I need to keep my shinai there. Otherwise, neither of us are winning that engagement. That's correct. Yeah. Because, yeah, okay, maybe you got control, but then at that point, you become too tense. You also lose control of your own sword. So it kind of gets messy if you don't do it correctly. So... Great, great, great show. Great, great example, sorry. Okay, so this one looked a little bit different. That, uh, so that was uh, my attempt at Suryotoshi mm -hmm. without Osai. So okay. I immediately slid down his shinai without striking it. Just a firm, quick slide down, mm -hmm. push it out of the way. That would be uh, useful in a slightly less firm um, uh, opponent. Uh, Chudan. 
Okay. So I could push it out of the way and get a little bit longer than I can. Uh, this this can potentially give me a little bit longer time to to attack men. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, now I do see that for for this motion, you're you're playing with the center where you throw in the tip. Uh, you know, slightly with the, with the intention forward to the opponent, but the tr the tip is kind of coming a little bit to the side. I'm guessing this is to get a better hold on the opponent's yeah, shinai, correct? Yeah, this way I have more space with which to uh, to press. If I keep mm -hmm. it facing directly at my opponent, it's a very thin line, mm -hmm. and it's really hard to control from a very thin line onto a thin line. This way, I have uh, a larger space to press down. Nice, nice. Um, okay. Okay, so... So that was, um, uh, Harai, uh, Harai Waza. Mm. Um, that's if someone has a, uh, fairly loose, mm -hmm. uh, grip, like, looser than the second one. Yeah. Um, strike it out of the way. You want to strike closer to their hands than the tip of the shinai mm -hmm. because it, if you strike closer to their hands more of the shinai is moved out of the way and it's harder to recover correct so this gets it out of the way completely to strike men and of course yeah you come in you you you, are, you approach towards the hands obviously you don't you don't want to be too deep because then you'll be at risk of getting hit yourself but yeah and you want to come in to strike my, yeah correct yeah it's too close for you to strike as well um, if you well, notice, I'm also using Fumikomi to power this strike so that mm -hmm. I'm not using my shoulder, my biceps, my arms. I'm using my body to, to, to power this, uh, yes. this strike. And this is what I was talking about. Renzo Kuwasa helping you to understand timing for other techniques, right? Because I'm guessing that as you perform this, you will perform it kind of off in a Koteman timing, right? Like pop, pop instead of pop, pop. Yeah. Right, so you don't want to skip that beat. You want to come in uh, directly into the technique. Yeah. So this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, just I think it. Um, I think uh, if you can do a strong hot eye, you mm -hmm. can do a, a lot of waza from there. Nice, nice. Uh, another thing, um, much much like Ito, I'm guessing also this will work too against somebody that may be going back with not such a strong center, you can, you know, make a little bit safer for you. And also maybe if they're close in the distance, but not really decided to attack yet, this could also be beneficial as well, right? Certainly. Mm. Yeah, okay, cool. And that's uh, from the Ura or reverse side. Mm -hmm. So if I want to say open up Kote, mm -hmm. I might lower my Shoto underneath there, uh, Shinai and snap it up. Mm -hmm. for uh, Harai the other way. Or I might do that if I want to strike men after they've recovered. So I'll strike the Shinai out of the way, they'll recover men, and as soon as they are recovered, uh, they might overshoot it a little bit, mm. and then men will be open. Nice. But this opens up Kote side. Okay, it opens up the Kote side. Uh, now, obviously, depending on the opponent, you can, you can also get you might get different reactions as well. Just much more like like doing it with Ito. So in this case, I see the similarities across the board. You have to uh, you have to learn your opponent's uh, reactions, timing, uh, distance. Mm. You need to do these types of things early in a match in Shiai so that you can then potentially plan uh, how you want to end the match. Yes, correct. So this one, and that's uh -huh. that's just uh, striking men with uh, hot eye, just off okay. the side. For this one, this, yeah, this is just uh, pressing in towards center, not uh, knocking the shinai out of the way, but trying to take center, um, and that can also uh, push them off and also make your opponent uncomfortable, and if you can. Push it, the same with shoot on. If you can push in, take center, they might step back, mm. which will give you an opportunity to attack. Yes. Uh, I'm, as I see this here, as I see this happening, if if this person is too relaxed, 
that's it. Like you took control because even if you take a step sideways, you can you can hit from that position. You can hit them and you have the you could not say the perfect distance because maybe you're a little bit too close, but you can definitely make it work at this distance. And at this point, this person, it's kind of trapped, right? It's kind of like the kata, the kodachi kata, right? Where like the person is trapped already uh, with the hands. There's not much he can do on this side. The only thing, the only exit strategy uh, that I think will be successful is go for a very quick doll at that point. Yeah. Right? Besides that, well, I don't think. From here, you see how close, uh, how close we are. Yeah. Uh, like I said, if he steps back, that would give me a good opportunity to to just strike a man. Yeah. But if he doesn't step back and, you know, we're there for a heartbeat, I can strike dull at this distance. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Ah, this is another. But I, yeah. ha I have to know what he's going to do. Mm. This is this is another point too to kind of mention a little bit, because the distance for attacking for the ideal, the ideal distance for attacking each technique can vary uh, depending on the opponent and depending on your body type as well. But it, oh, across the board, you can hit dull at a closer distance, for example, that you can hit men. So I'm guessing that here you are uh, at a good distance for the dull. And if he gives you the distance, then you can go for the men. Cool. Very interesting. Yep. Um, okay. Do we have another one after this? I think that's it. Okay. That was it. Okay, cool. Let me see. Um, okay, so maybe now we can talk a little bit about some strategies. Um, oh, sorry, because Avi asked, sent me a question uh, before. He asked about some uh, Shoto Seme, which I think you, you, you express a little bit kind of the entail of the Seme, right? But physically, or what are some of the things you do with your Shoto? You, you mentioned earlier moving it around, things like this, but specifically to pressure the opponent, how would you do it from the Shoto? So some of the time I sort of, um, uh, sort of imagine skiing with the Shoto mm -hmm. and you could potentially ski with the Shoto. Uh, it's not going to be Ipon, but you could do it. But I imagine that. And then I sort of uh, tense and adjust my body like I'm coming in for it and uh, so people will react to the Shoto movements in that way. Um, other things are if someone adjusts, like if you watch where they're looking, if they're looking at your Kote, if they're mm -hmm. looking at your men, I might just raise the Shoto for a brief moment. Like I'm going to, to block men, just mm. raise it up just so I want them to feel like, well, if I attack men, it's going to be blocked. So there's no use in trying that. Mm -hmm. I, I want I want to instill the idea that if you go to attack anything, it's not going to work. I so see. don't attack anything and just stand there for me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's a little bit more crass than uh, than reality, but that's that's the kind of um, thing I want them to be. I want them to feel like I my shoto can be everywhere at once. Mm -mm. So show that I have movement. Um, but also be able to keep it steady in the center. Like I'm not like waving it all around and doing weird stuff. I'm just keeping center, just like when you do Gorokeko with uh, high-ranking sensei, they'll hold center and you can move around and try to adjust to get you know, an angle on something and they'll hold center and they'll just watch you until you do something and then, you know, maybe Suryage men or what, whatever you do, they'll fight yeah. it. So I try to uh, keep center in that way where um, uh, I have center. If their Shinai tries to get center, I'll push it away. Or if they try to get away from my Shoto, like the uh, like with the Hira Seigan, a flat um, angle towards my Kote, my uh, Kodachi will take the space that they've evacuated. Mm. And if they go for that Kote, um, my Shoto can uh, defend against that. So I try to instill the idea that I can do all of these things at once, even if I can't necessarily do that. Yeah, I understand. Ah, very interesting, very interesting. Yeah, sem my idea of Seme is very hard to explain. <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, listen, if I give a spirit animal to Nito, I think it's a rattlesnake, right? Because you have the, the little rattle on the back, the person might, might focus on it, might, and then striking from the other side. I don't know, just a little. 
I think either the rattlesnake <laughs> or the scorpion. Okay. I have the yeah. tail ready to go and the claws. Yeah. The claws uh, trying nice. to hold you down so I could poison you. You know. Yeah, that's uh, that's 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 a good that's a good one too. Uh, okay. Um, so also tell us a little bit about the seme with the daito. So with the daito, seme is sort of like what a jodan player might do. Um, I have a jodan player in my dojo who's from um, Kataoka Sensei School in New York, um, as well as practicing a lot on the West Coast. And he tends to knock over all my stuff. <laughs> Sorry. Um, he'll tend to come into center, mm -hmm. like he's ready to, to attack, and then someone will uh, react to that, and they'll like, you know, the same open yeah. man, and they'll hit this kote, yeah. like, what have you. With Nito, it's a similar idea, mm. but I'll try to duck down here a little bit. But I try to push from here. Yes. So instead of bringing my hand to center, I try to think here, mm. push this towards them. Yeah. And uh, or just hold it real steady. I want them to be. I want them to be looking at it, thinking about yeah. it. As long as they're thinking about my daito, I can maybe catch their sword with my shoto and strike. I see. If they're thinking about my shoto, I might not even have to touch their sword. I might be able to sort of pull it back in like a nuki motion and strike I see. with the daito. So I try, if I can, I try to get my opponent to focus back and forth between my daito and my shoto. Mm. And if I can tell what they're focusing on, try to use the other, use the other sword I to um, either arrest their focus or punish them for not paying enough attention to it. I see. That's I see. Uh, that's my intention anyway. I see. It's of course easier said than done. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, can I ask you maybe to show us for a second? You did that pressure with the uh, with the balance point of your of your shinai forward. Mm -hmm. How would you? What would be the motion to switch from here to let's say maybe kote or do from after you started? Can you show the motion of doing that? If, if so you I have space. <laughs> so uh, I have space, but I'm sort of tethered to the computer a little yeah. bit from my headset. Um, so for Kote, kind of cutting down on it, uh, similar to what a Jodan player might do, mm -hmm. my hands uh, out to the side mm -hmm. and cutting cutting here. For Dol, I twist along Shushin yeah. and cut out to the side and cut down, okay. uh, down to Dol. Um, that uh, I can't get quite far enough away from the camera to, yeah. to demonstrate it. No, but what I meant, the question, what I, what I meant with my question is after you do that push forward for the semi with the daito, uh, mm -hmm. can you show the motion of how you switch from that position forward into kote or do? Oh, I see. Uh, let me take my headset off for a moment so I can get a little more. Cool. Mm. I see, I see. So yeah, I don't know how clear that really was. No, no, it's, it's, I think it's good. And the main thing is, is just to get to know, to understand that timing and the motion to switch it, right? Because uh, we don't necessarily get to see it until it's too late. Like, for example, if I go to a tournament, people may not know about this motions, but uh, so. it's, it's definitely, it's definitely a point, uh, a relevant point to pay attention to when you're practicing Nito or when you're practicing against Nito, because, uh, this semi or this pressure, you know, it kind of makes the person think the only place that they can go is men, but I know you, you can go anywhere, right? And just to see how you make the motion, how the center stays uh, towards the opponent and everything rotates around it to go into the target. I think it's very important to, you know, to break down, to analyze. So yeah, thank you for that. Um, let me see. Mm. Okay. So you didn't, you didn't, uh, 
we didn't talk about Hikiwasa. Let's talk a little bit just briefly about the Hikiwasa. Uh, especially Avi sent me a question earlier. Uh, do you change your grip uh, when you go into Suba Seri Ai? Um, or, or even, uh, as a matter of fact, even do you switch your grip even during your regular Kamai, right? At, at any point, and what reasons would that be for? So in regular Kamai, I never uh, swap to Tsubamoto. I always keep my hand at the Tsukagashira. Mm -hmm. um, from Tsubazerei, sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. I tend not to. Um, a lot of Nito players do that. Um, by moving your hand up to the Tsuba, mm -hmm. you can do Hikiwaza from a closer distance, and you have more leverage while in Tsubazerei. Okay. Um, I, I tend not to do that at all, and I push back to a little bit farther away before striking Hikiwaza. Um, there are a couple Hikiwaza that you really have to move up to the Tsuba to do. Um, I don't think I can really demonstrate them right now, but... It's okay, um, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll do another stream at some other point as well, so... Yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> so, yeah, we can, um, we can save some of that for the, the later points. Yeah, but during um, for uh, for Kirikaishi, when I receive Kirikaishi, mm -hmm. I always move my uh, Daito hand up to the Tsuba mm -hmm. uh, so that I can receive. And uh, part of receiving, uh, to my mind, is to do um, uh, uh, Teno Uchi mm. uh, whenever receiving so that the Shinai isn't just bounced into my own head. Yeah. So ten uchi here, ten uchi here. I receive with both shinai, um, and then the shinai that's not actively receiving. So I'm receiving on this side. Mm -hmm. I'll bring the other shinai to the center, and threaten the skidare, mm. the, the 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 throat guard. Yes. And so I'll swap to this side, and bring the kodachi, uh, point that to the to the throat, and then swap to the throat to the throat, so that the sword that's not uh, receiving the kirikaishi is threatening the throat each time and also um if i weren't to uh, move my hand up to the tsuba at that point the sword would just be too long and i'd have yeah. to sort of hold it behind myself mm. to safely point it at the the, the throat I see, I see, I see. without uh disrupting their kirikaishi i want them to be able to do kirikaishi without even considering that they're with a nito player I see. and that i'm doing anything different i see i see cool um Let me see. Okay, so let's let's talk about the part that everybody wants to talk about, and it's efficiency of fighting in tournament Shi'ai and fighting against Nito. So before we do yes. that, <laughs> let me let me ask you about any considerations, anything different about Ipong from Nito or against Nito. Anything that's different should be exactly the same. Mm. Uh, you cannot, for instance, uh, get into your mind that, well, I'm striking with one hand, so of course my, my strike is going to be weaker, and they should go easier on me for that. That's not how it works. Um, and also, if you think that, then you're not going to work to, to make a firm yeah. um, strike. Mm. So it's... Uh, if if this strike wouldn't work from Chudan, like if it's not firm enough, straight enough, uh, nice enough, if it, if it doesn't have the fundamentals of Kendo, it's not Ipon. Okay. So you have to stick to Kendo fundamentals um, and try to make your strike look like um, like a beautiful Kendo strike. Nice, nice, nice. And this is something that Avi was mentioning about him testing on. Somebody, they were commenting back and forth about what the judges might think is a good or not a good ex uh, exam. And one thing that he was mentioning is like, you have to make sure that you have a good showing of your technique regardless. So that will probably give you a passing rate. Uh, okay, so what about Ippon with the Kodachi? Is there any instance where Ippon can be scored with the Kodachi? Yes, yeah, so in the, um, the Shimpan Tebiki, the, uh, the official rules for uh, Shimpan, um, this one right here. This one right. Yep. It's, okay. <laughs> uh, in there. Uh, 
It might be page 37. I can't quite oh, remember. Yeah, if you catch that, if you catch the right page. Yeah. <laughs> um, the rules for striking, uh, the only rule that's different for Nito. So all the, the areas are the same. Men, Kote, Do, everything's mm -hmm. the same. The only difference is the only time Ippon from the Kodachi is valid is if the Nitoka is controlling their opponent's sword with the Daito. Okay. So the classic example, pick these up. I have a uh, Nitoryu Bokuto, so I can show that the classic example is from Joge Tachi. If Aite strikes this Kote, mm -hmm. you cut down onto it and strike with the Kodachi. I see, I so see. So you have to control it. Um, so if you control the Daito, you can score with the Shoto, but you must have proper extension mm -hmm. and all the other fundamentals. Uh, you have to have good posture, Zanshin, Seme, like everything has to be built into it. I see, I see. Um, also, uh, the rules explicitly state that you cannot score with the Shoto from Tsubazeriai. So no Hikiwaza with the Shoto, no stabbing someone while you're while you're together. Okay, okay. That's that's only for Tanken though, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, actually, I have the old rule book, so I don't have page thirty-seven here. I think the new book. I don't know what page it was actually on. Yeah. No, no. What I'm saying, I, I have no. What I'm saying is my book doesn't go to thirty-seven because mine is a really old version, and I know there's a new rule book, so maybe I need to get that one to look that up. But anyway. <clears throat> um, what was I gonna say? Okay, so that's uh, that's a point on that. Um, maybe okay. Strategies to fight against Ito, and strategies from Ito to fight against Mito. Uh, somebody earlier said, you know, they like to move around with Hirakiashi to threaten the Kote. Uh, I'm guessing that works for when the Daito is on the right hand, uh, mostly. Uh, but what are some of the strategies that you find useful? First, let's talk about fighting against Chudan. Uh, fighting against Chudan from Nito is, um, well, it's complicated. There's so many variables. Uh, you want to try to control center just as per normal. You want to, um, you want to be able to see and take advantage of mm. openings. Um, you want to be able to uh, develop Riai or um, kind of a mutual logic and understanding with your opponent so you understand what they're doing and what they're going to do and uh, see opportunities maybe even before they happen. Um, barring that, if you can control center, you know, get them to come to you. Hmm where you can uh, force their Shanai where you want it to be, you can open up Men and Kolte and Do in that way. Um, aside from that, I think all the things we've talked about already sort of um, uh, sort of work into, into that strategy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, mostly what we're talking about how, is how to approach the Ito player, so I think we cover mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff. So uh, against Nito... What are some of the strategies that you find effective? What are some of the advices you can give for somebody dealing against Nito, fighting against Nito? So uh, if you're going to fight against Nito, um, some of the strategies for fighting against Jodan um, can be effective, making mm -hmm. sure you threaten the, um, the upper Kote. Mm -hmm. uh, because with Nito, both Kote uh, and Jodan, both Kote are valid targets because you're not in uh, standard Chudan. So, um, threatening the left Kote uh, on someone doing Nito with the Daito in their left hand uh, is a good strategy. You want them to second guess, you know, their attacks. You want them to feel uncomfortable and you want them to feel like uh, if, I, if I try to move that, you're going to take that Kote. Um, trying to keep the sword slightly out of reach of the Shoto uh, can be helpful. Mm. You don't want to do too, anything too strange. Um, if you, you know, move your sword way out of the way, you've already opened yourself up for the Nito yeah. player, and they don't need to control your sword. You've moved it out of the way for them. Mm. Um, 
So you want to keep your sword engaged, but try not to get it trapped. But if the Nito player is attacking your sword with their Shoto, remember the Kote is right there. Yeah. It's attached to their Shoto. If you can get that, um, then you can win that way. Um, I find uh, Waza that are really strong against Nito uh, are uh, Suriage Waza. Mm. So you got to remember the Nito player is striking with only one hand. Or, uh, you're using both. You can slide it out of the way yeah. and, and take men. Um, so don't be afraid of engaging, especially with the Daito, because you uh, a lot of the time you can win that fight. Yeah. Um, so Suriage Waza, um, if you, uh, Nuki Waza, where say someone strikes Do or uh, strikes men from Nito, and you strike the sword down out of the way, it's very hard to recover. Mm -hmm. And in that instance in particular, the um, the natural reaction is to use the Kodachi hand to cover men. Yeah. Now, one of the videos I shared with you was. Um, blocking with the shoto ah, and then okay. my partner attacks that kote and i think that uh shows one of the key things that you can do against nito okay hold on uh the shoto uh, against with he the your partner his kote after right okay i believe it was this one yeah it's this one right here okay let me so he's gonna sort here. of threaten threaten men and i'm gonna raise my hand like i'm going to block men and he just takes the kote Mm -mm. Okay, so this is one of the the first approaches. Obviously, it doesn't matter which hand, Either which hands, hand yeah. the Daito is in. The other video you sent me, I believe, was Men Suriaga Men, right? And oh, but this I think it was you do Men and he does Suriaga. Let me see. Uh, yeah, ah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. So I don't have control of his sword. I failed to get control, and I'm just striking, sort of out of desperation, ju just throwing a strike. Suriage men. Yes. So normally my my strategy kind of resonates a lot with this, where I try to get the Nito player to bring the sword to me, right? Because as you said, uh, I have two hands on my sword, so it's easier for me to take that center. And obviously, if the Nito player didn't catch my sword with the with the Kodachi as well. Um, Okay, Let, let's see Let's see more of the examples that you sent here for, for this. Hold on. Ah, this one's uh, <laughs> felt instant. It happens. <laughs> yes, it happens. So, yeah, very interesting. Um... Okay, the um, the places where sorry, let me backtrack. We talked about also about the left cote uh, being a target as well against uh, with Nito, right? Like so, the Nitoka can hit the Ito player with in the left cote, correct? Um, only a, so the left cote isn't um, a target unless you're in a Kamai other than Chudan. Mm -hmm. So Sagan, where you point the Shin, where you're in Chudan, but you point the Shinai maybe at the left eye is mm -hmm. still Chudan. The left Kote is not valid. But if they raise up their arms yeah. to sort of, to sort of uh, threaten the Kote and they're yeah. up here at mm -hmm. a Hira or flat Sagan, yeah. that, uh, in that position, the left Kote becomes uh, a valid target because okay. that is not Chudan. Uh, same as summons in Jodan or Gaidan. Okay. Um, yeah. So as we approach, as we approach our opponent, is there anything that we should keep in mind as Ito players against Nito? Um, I think uh, you're just staying calm, mm. um, being able to. Um, work to be able to tell what they're going to do with the Daito. If you can tell when they're going to attack, mm -hmm. uh, when a Nito player attacks, they're opening themselves up. Yeah. Uh, you can't attack without making an opening. Even if 
they're able to block and attack at the same time by blocking one thing they're not blocking another thing i see so so if i'm striking men but blocking my head or something uh the colte on my shoto hand this colte is open yeah my doll both sides are open um ski is potentially open um also uh the idea that nito is more defensive uh i think is sort of an illusion mm -hmm. as people imagine uh them just blocking everything uh which isn't really how you should approach it um but um from chudon chudon's a solid position already yeah. it, if someone strikes your men and you're in you know a strong chudon you you know skewer them on your shinai that yeah that's not ipon if they are able to strike the little bit of dull that's under your right arm uh and you don't move that's not ipon because there was no di yeah. or logical reason for them to strike so from nito because you're out of chudan and in another position um whichever side the daito is on that dull is open the kote is open the yeah. kote for the for the shoto is open and because their sword is shorter if you're able to get that kote they can't very well skewer you on it yeah. it's open you can you can get at it so you got to remember it's uh, the uh, defensive um, posture is a little bit of an illusion. There are openings all over. You just need to get them uh, sort of out of position. If they're in the middle of an attack, it's hard to recover from it. So you can allow, uh, allow the Nito player to open mm -hmm. themselves up for you. Yeah. Um, part of my, I guess, my strategy when fighting is Nito is understanding exactly that, that it, it takes... It takes some time for that sword to come down, so I have some uh, some wiggle room, I guess, to say to to provoke them and counter as well. I I know I find it very difficult to strike without a reaction. It's I feel that Ito against Ito, sometimes when somebody falls asleep per se, you can get a lucky man, right, or you can get a lucky kote, but Certainly. with a good kamai against Nito, I feel that you'd really have to you have to work a little bit differently to make that opening because it's hard to get those lucky hits of you know the person's falling asleep. It's much harder because of the distance that you have to travel and so on. So oh give me one second guys. Uh okay. Uh okay no sorry somebody was knocking here. Um so the the biggest thing when I try to fight against Nito is to make sure to not let them grab my sword with the Shoto. I feel that I can get away with so much more as long as they don't have my shot, uh, my, my sword under under grip per se. And so sometimes I do I do vary my Kamai where maybe I am in Chudan with maybe with a tip to the, to the side to just close the distance and then be able to strike I guess more I don't have to explain it right now like uh, maybe one day we, i'll go practice with you I and mean, we can try different different commands oh, and so that on would be great. uh but yeah i try to make sure to close the distance and sometimes to play with that i just maybe i bring my body closer but put my tip a little bit away from your body to give you the illusion that you're not yet in danger and then i can explode towards my opponent um but yeah my main my main focus when fighting against nito is to not get caught by their by their sword i feel like i can i can escape many dangerous situations as long as i have my sword with me and not in your in your grip um if a nito player isn't able to reach your sword mm -hmm. for instance you're suddenly fighting against a uh, katate jodan player mm -hmm. they're doing jodan but only have one hand on their sword so you've put them at a bit of a disadvantage mm -hmm. And, and I think sometimes, and this is just a fun fun strategy, I guess. I'm not going to say that this is the strategy you should do. But sometimes when you try different things on a Nito player that they haven't really experienced before, now you have that, that, that confusion effect that normally Nito players have, have against Ito player, right? Yeah. So anything, anything that you find, uh, you know, like pressing for you, anything that you find that it's... Uh, What's it called? Powerful in somebody's kendo when when they do it against Nito. 
anything specific that you find that's like okay oh that is good that's something that you know good good approach uh i find when someone's able to do a good clean strong men without any alteration to their kendo mm -hmm. to nito it looks especially good okay um when you're able to uh just make the nito player open and and just take men as just as if as if they were open the whole time with uh, no effort. I, I, I'm always really impressed when I can see someone do that. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and I think a, a good straight man, it's definitely a very good point uh, to show in your kendo. I think for testing is good. If you do it in a shiai, even if you don't get it, but you have a good, good control of yourself, good control of your sword, I think it, it puts the judges too in a in a different mood to, to this person, right? Um, so what I wanted to do, you send me a video from a tournament. Maybe we can watch this this fight and see a little bit of the approach of what both senses are doing in, in this fight. That cool, we got time. Now I do have to say this, I have to go to practice pretty much right after finishing the stream. So give me one minute to make sure everything is set uh, to, to go to practice and make sure that I can, I can just grab my stuff and go. So you give me one second, I'll be right back, okay? Don't go anywhere. Okay, sorry, buddy. I'm back. Uh, give me one second. Okay, I just have to make sure that everything's set for me to go. Normally, I don't stay this long for um, for the stream, so I wasn't expecting it to go this way. I'm gonna say if anybody has any questions so far, anything you feel that I have missed to ask Ash, please let me know in the comments here. Uh, if you haven't, please hit the like button. Make sure that this gets pushed out and more people get to see this awesome stuff that we're sharing today. Now, uh, tell me, you said that this is Fuji Sensei in this video. Yeah, this is uh, Fuji Sensei at the uh, like the All Japan East West Taikai. Okay. And Fuji Sensei is competing for Yamaguchi Ken. Okay. And this, I believe, everyone in this tournament is Hachidan. Nice, nice. Okay, so I'm gonna play out. We can talk a little bit about. If you want me to stop at any second, let me know. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the approach. Very powerful block right there very sharp block uh, and immediately immediately ready to do anything if there was an opening presented right like right here he blocked actually with both swords so in this case imagine the scenario if he brings the sword the daito down to control the opponent's sword could he strike with the 
with the Shoto and score Nippon? Uh, potentially. Mm. But with the position the Shoto's in, I think that would be extremely difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, imagining but, that he... Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. He could also potentially slide the Daito along the sword and mm -hmm. maybe strike men. I, I don't know if it would be possible, but I imagine understand. a scenario where he could slide the Daito in and strike men at that time. Nice. It's hard to hit that Kote on that angle. Yeah, it's it's held off to the side a little bit at a very um, uh, oblique angle that makes it difficult to hit. You can see uh, Fuji-sensei is so patient mm. and not scared. He's able to, with very little movement, maintain his position. Nice. And the, the, the sensei he's uh, competing against is, you, you can see he's incredibly strong. Yeah. Now, quick question. Uh, potentially, could he attack the Kote from the inside of the Shoto? Uh, yes. Okay, so... The... I think that would be very difficult to hit, but um, the entire Kote Bouton is, mm -hmm. uh, is, is valid. Nice, 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 nice. I think maybe it, with... Uh, the reason I'm asking is just for e every scenario, right? Because let's imagine that uh, he had the Shoto on the left hand, I think it will become easier, let's say, maybe if he raises the the Kote, maybe somebody can come around and hit the, the Kote uh, of, of the Daito from the inside rather than the outside. So it's very interesting to know that you can hit from either way. Very nice attempt for that, though. Oh, nice attempt for it. Yeah, that's to say he's he's very strong. He's not letting down the pressure. Yeah, no, he's 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 terrifying. Yeah, both sides have to show a lot of patience, right? Yeah, if you attack, um, if you attack into a trap, you're dead. You have to, you have to really know when to attack and when to hold back. Mm -mm. So this distance right here, the you know, it it, it can get really messy here at this distance, um, especially because this is maybe it, it looks like he's doing kamai with the shoto rather than regular distance. I always feel that this is one of the trickiest parts about fighting against Nito. It's understanding what the real distance is and not allowing yourself to get confused by the the sword. Not saying that this is what's happening here, but I'm saying this is normally something that I commonly see when people are fighting, that they, they tend to do Kamae at, at, at awkward distance against Nito because they don't really know where to do the Kamae and so on. So. I guess we should have talked about this earlier, but what are the points where we should keep in mind of distance when doing Kamae against Nito? Well, over training, um, you, you want to be able to develop your own uh, comfortable Uchima, that's uh, striking distance. Mm. Uh, so Sensei talk about uh, Isoku Ito no Mai, uh, the one step, one strike distance where the Shinai are crossed around uh, the Mono Uchi, the, the striking portion of the Shinai mm -hmm. are together near the, the the kensen the tip of the sword yep but um you want to be able to develop a sense of how far away you are from from your opponent or your partners during practice where you can see the issue is with uh fighting against a nito player uh people use the shinai to measure that distance mm -hmm. and nito and jodan uh, uh remove the ability to do that with Nito, if you use 
uh, the Nito player Shinai to measure the distance with your Shinai, you're suddenly closer than you think you are. Yeah. And with the Jodon player, you don't have a Shinai in front of you at all to uh, to measure. So you have to have that sense on your own. Yeah. Uh, and that I think takes years to develop and know exactly when someone's in range or when someone's a little too far away or too close without totally. having the Shinai as a measuring stick. Totally. Or measuring totally. tool. Cool. Okay, let's keep watching. <clears throat> Sorry, just to add up to the, the, last, the last thing you said, is that to summarize, you have to learn what the distance for your Isokuito no Kamae is rather than using the Shinais, the different Shinais, as, as the distance measurement. That's right. Cool, cool, cool. It's not afraid of throwing that Tsuki. It could be really dangerous. Yeah. Wow, that's a very that's a very nice approach to that though. Uh, a lot of good sword control when it comes to that, right? Because he did a lot of motions, and he oh I thought he hit the the Gyakudo, but actually he hit the he went on the other side. That's crazy. Yeah, it's so fast. Yeah, but on the other side, Fuji Sensei is very well aware, like very nice cover. It, it's. Crazy exchange. That was a crazy exchange. Mm -hmm. That's why I picked this match. It's, <laughs> it's uh, very high level and there's a lot going on. Oh, very surprising. Very sharp. Very sharp. Uh, let's let's break it down a little bit in slow motion, right? Like he, I think this is what you said, right? Like he, at this point, he's too concerned with the Shoto, right? He had his attention on it. Especially when he closed the distance, it becomes a little bit dangerous. So, of course, he got a little bit concerned on that. Nice, nice. I always say that in a competition, you have to be careful of not overreacting because right after an overreaction, overcompensation follows. And I feel that you see uh, right here, White, he covers, he overreacts by covering up here. And when he realizes that there was no danger, then overcompensation. Yeah, over relaxation instead of if we would have kept the sword forward. It would have been a little bit different result, but here he went down and Fuji Sensei managed to close the distance extremely well. You see, he didn't realize that he closed the distance and he managed to to get that Ippon right there. Uh, what are your, your thoughts or observations from, from that Ippon? Any, any pointers? Exactly, exactly the same. He was able to keep focus. Uh, he was able to keep his opponent focusing on the Shoto and his opponent overreacted overcompensated and then a fuji sensei didn't strike uh the other senshu uh uh shinai out of the way he just used the shoto and sort of counterbalanced his uh left side and just struck with just the daito mm -mm. He, uh, he found the opportunity and just took it so and 
Well, he developed the opportunity, honestly. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, so, but what you're saying when he counterbalanced with the diet with the Kolachi, you mean that you know he? This is something that I, I I'm gonna bring somebody else to talk about this at some point. Talk about bi biomechanics, uh, you know, of Kendo, but understanding how you know you can use because both hands you have both hands separated instead of in one place, so you can definitely use one hand to help the momentum of the other, correct? Is that what you meant to say? Oh, certainly, yes. Nice. This is another point that maybe for the next stream we do, we can we can talk about this this point because uh, sure. it's a very hidden detail, I think. Um, okay, cool. Very sharp man. Fuji Sensei is always using both swords at all times. Mm -hmm. He never just neglects one. Yeah, I can tell. That's difficult to do. Very crazy exchange. If you don't mind me, let me let me break this one down a little bit. What you said is 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 right on point when it comes about the use of both swords. And what I find impressive as well is the different angle that he approaches the with the shoto. Uh, I, I'm noticing a lot of he doesn't go straight forward or just favors one motion like or anything like that he's he's changing the angles and trying to find an opening within that shoto so amazing computing power in that brain let's be honest but this engagement right here very interesting because you can say that he initiated that man and right here his opponent is kind of going out of necessity and of course there wasn't an ippon but very very good approach See how important it is to have uh, strong and flexible wrists to do yes. Kata Also, how unfazed he is from an attack, right? That Suki, that Suki could have been very scary. Like you could, he could have made you go back, but no, he he kept his post. Oh, ah, this happens once in a while with with uh, when the video is coming out to an end. Let me just. Yeah, he kept he kept his posture. Yeah, it's, it, it's incredibly hard to do when when receiving a, when someone tries to ski you. It's it's hard not to sort of move out of the way. But yeah, but she sense it's very strong. It's yeah, it's, it's crazy. So that was the end of the video. So I guess that's why it went black. Um, so the the biggest points when it comes to approaching Nito, I guess to summarize how to approach Nito under in Shiai. Uh, in, in my in my thoughts from our conversation today is number one, don't overwhelm yourself, right? Don't don't overthink it. Don't you know just calm down and and just like regular kendo, make openings. Um, when you talked about testing at the higher levels, if somebody comes with nito, uh, me as a kendoka, even if I haven't practiced, even if I don't practice regularly uh, with a nitoka. I should be able to adapt and adjust because at the end of the day, we're both doing kendo. It's nothing, it's nothing different, correct? That's right. Um, any any points, any summary points uh, when it comes to, or any last advice when it comes to uh, approaching Nito 
uh, especially during maybe Shi'ai or testing? Uh, so one thing um, we didn't have time to go over is um, keeping your body centered. Mm -hmm. You don't want to turn too, too sideways. One, one sword will get closer, the other will get farther. Mm -hmm. You want to still keep your body straight, same as in Chudan. Um, maybe if we have another, uh, another one of these, we can talk about that. But uh, there's some methods for training that way. But when, when approaching Nito, um, you have to approach it just like Chudan Kendo. Mm -hmm. uh, the same mindset, the same, um, uh, the same spirit. Uh, they're, they're just the same. Um, uh, you don't want to get too far off from Kihon Kendo. I understand. Um, I was thinking, I just asked a poll to everybody in the chat, uh, you know, to see if we do another stream together. Uh, I, I think the answer is going to be yes, very, very quickly. Um, but I'm going to say the... Um, there's a couple of points that I, I wish we could have talked more, and I'm sorry because I have practice in like about 20 minutes, so I have to make sure that I, I'm there because, you know, I'm the one that starts the class and finishes it. Um, yeah. But I'm going to say there's a couple of things that I kind of wanted to explore further with you. One of them kind of okay. came up a little bit towards the end. It's kind of like the biomechanics of uh, Kendo and especially biomechanics of Nito, how to move the body how to uh, do the um, how to do all the motions effectively i'm always thinking about how to do my kendo effectively rather than um, you know fast or strong stuff like that is how can i be efficient of course there has to be power and speed in it but these are not my goals right my, my main goals normally is to make sure that it's effective so maybe we can talk about how can we do also nito more effectively um, you talked about the center of the body. What other things maybe we should keep in mind for next stream? What do you think? Oh, there's uh, just like everything else in Kendo. There's so much to go over and so many, so many things we could explore. Um, yes. Off the top of my head, I think um, maybe uh, adapting the way your body works. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a there's an excellent sensei at a dojo nearby, a Koryo Dojo. Mm -hmm. uh, Fong Sensei likes I to say him. that, well, yeah, he's 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 so he's so great. He likes to say that when you start kendo, you first learn to attack with the shinai with your hands. Mm -hmm. and then after you get comfortable with that, you attack with the feet. After that, you then learn to attack with the body, and it's uh, exactly the same in Nito. So uh, maybe stuff along the lines of that, how uh, one, uh, one's own kendo evolves from attacking from the hands to the feet to the entire body. Um, you know, that sort of thing. Also, one of the other uh, key training methods in the, uh, the method of Nito that I've been taught uh, is uh, to practice what's called namba aruki. Mm -hmm. That's walking where your right hand and right foot move forward together and uh -huh. your left hand and left foot move together so okay. instead of the opposite side doing that and then uh how you use your hip and i won't get too too much into that but uh that's another uh key to the method that uh that i've been taught that um we we didn't get to touch on today uh but, we're, um we definitely gonna have to do another stream with this because uh i had a lot of fun doing this so i, I i'm gonna I'm gonna abuse the fact that I, I found uh, Nitoka that is sharing all this stuff. Also, I kind of wanted to talk about, uh, somebody in the chat said, uh, Hikiwasa is another thing that we can talk about for the next time. Um, Certainly, I'll try to remember to, rec uh, I'll, I'll try to at some point record uh, a Hikiwasa. Let me, let me organize it and maybe I can, we can set up a date within the next few days and maybe we can, we can see when, when can we do it. Uh, the other we'll thing, that out. yeah. I think next week you're doing uh, uh, a Jodan episode. I correct, I believe, right? Correct. I'm looking uh, forward to that. If I if I if I would have known that we had so much fun, maybe I would have scheduled them a week after, so we could have done another one together. But yeah, next week I'm gonna well, do I'm, a Jodan. I'm looking forward to that, so I'm glad you did. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, next week I'm gonna do a Jodan episode. So everybody, please make sure to you know subscribe if you haven't, to, so you can come back. Um, do you do you want to? 
pull out some contact information, maybe like your Instagram or YouTube or anything like that, you, or you, you want to keep it just, you know, to yourself? Uh, well, all the videos I have on YouTube are um, uh, unlisted. Okay. Um, because I, you know, I get nervous about people seeing my kendo because people on the internet especially can be cruel and not necessarily constructive. Yes. Um, but I don't mind sharing my stuff too much. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want to share anyone else's kendo without of their course. express permission. Of course. So I don't really have much, uh, yeah. much up there. So but, um, I can figure out some things to put up. Yeah, uh, what I'm gonna say is because this was a big challenge for me when I started this channel too, like not showing everybody's scandal. Also, you know, the criticism that cannot necessarily be constructive. So I, I understand you completely. What I'm going to say guys, if we have a Discord server, I know Ash is in there and I'm sure that if you ask him any questions, he will be able to, to answer those questions there. Um, I think my name's Ash in the Discord server. Yes, I don't remember. I don't have it right now, but yes, <laughs> something, like, something like this. But you can just go to the Nito group, and then I'm sure he'll he'll read it. Um, another thing that I, I wanted to to talk about, because you pulled out the the uh, the kata bokuto, right? So maybe we didn't talk about kata as well, um, but maybe something we can maybe discuss a little bit in the future, if possible. A little bit. I don't have an awful lot to say about that. Uh, yeah. Musashikai has the kata that they've developed for uh, developing a kihon. Um, Nito Kendo, uh, I haven't practiced them that much. Mm -hmm. um, at my dojo, I'm the only Nito player, yeah. and uh, there's another, uh, there's a great um, Migi Nito player, right handed mm -hmm. Nito player at a dojo nearby, uh, Furokan. He, um, he's also practiced at the, uh, the seminars and everything. And uh, years ago, we, we used to practice the kata, but it, it's been some time. Yeah. And since I haven't been to the dojo in Japan, um, I can show you what I know, yeah. but I'm not, um, I'm not uh, expert in it or anything. I so got you, I got you. We can talk well, about it. You know? we'll, we'll talk about it. But anyways, guys, uh, I think we're going to have to head out because I have my practice. Uh, Ash, thank you very much for doing this today with us. Thank you so much for having me. This is nah, the first yeah. time I've been on the internet. I'm famous. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> um, so we will be, we'll keep doing this together uh, as much as you will allow me. Uh, we, it's a lot of people that are extremely grateful for this. A hundred percent of people that voted said yes. They want to do another. They want to see another stream oh, wow. with you. So oh, thank you. Uh, we're all we're all excited to to have you here again. Um, and maybe if you can get up here, we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll make you an apple pie, and you can uh, visit and practice. You remember? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, we okay. Get, we can get to that next time too. Nice. Uh, what, what was gonna say? I know you guys having a fundraiser. I saw an email that there's a fundraiser <laughs> seminar coming up um, on November fifth. Koryo Dojo yes. uh, in or around Richmond, Virginia, mm -hmm. is having a fundraiser, um, a seminar that's going to be led by Sean Kim Sensei who just passed seventh dawn in Las Vegas. Nice. Um, they're doing a seminar, also a Shinsa up mm -hmm. to Sandan. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, a fundraiser for um, uh, for one of the uh, local kendoka whose business was hurt by uh, by COVID. Mm -hmm. He he runs a um, an oyster farm. Nice. So for $30, uh, you can join in the seminar. You also will get a bag of oysters. So, um, you know, it should be it should be a lot of fun. Plus a bag of oysters. Yes, a bag of oysters. <laughs> and yeah, so I think I think maybe this will be a great opportunity to try to find my way out there. We can organize oh, you something. You can make it. I'll, I'll, I'll be there. Nice, nice, I'd nice. Love, I'd love to see you again. Nice. Yeah, me too, man. Uh, as a matter of fact, you, you mentioned the William and Mary tournament. And mm -hmm. this is how we met. This is the first time I was in Virginia. And that's how we met. Uh, no, no not kidding. Before that. No, no, we no. saw each we, other we were a before team that. in Georgia. Yeah, yeah, but we didn't really talk. Like we, we that's oh. when we really talked. We, we we went out for lunch and everything, in, in Virginia. Right. Yeah, 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 before we, yeah. yeah we we met each other through Kendo like that. But that's when we actually became friends. I think, that's when we actually yeah. got to talk to each other and so on, and great great experience. So, man, okay. Uh, I, yeah, I'm lingering here because I yeah, love to you, talk you, with you. you. Gotta get to practice, so. <laughs> <laughs> what I do have to say, guys, I'm posting. I just posted a video that should have been live. I think maybe like about 18 minutes ago. The stream, I think, is gonna redirect everybody into that video. If you can watch it, let me know what you think. 
Uh, it's from another stream that I did with Seisho Canada, but we'll talk about that at some other point. Ash, thank you very much. Uh, you have a good, good rest of your day. I'll see you soon, man. You too. Okay. I'll see you soon. And everybody, thank you very much for being here. Please subscribe if you haven't. Hit the like button so this video gets pushed out to more people. And please make sure that you keep practicing. We all keep getting better and getting stronger. Okay. Take care, everybody. You guys have a good day. Bye. Well, thank you.